guys, and welcome to another episode of Movie Bollocks. It's not the normal bollocks, it's Movie Bollocks. And in today's episode... Um, well, I continue the theme of Pauls. We had Paul Knight on originally, and we've got two Pauls on this episode. So basically, if your name's not Paul, you're not getting on the movie podcast. Ha 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 ha, that's a joke. Obviously, um, I'm going to get some more people on. Anyone who's into movies in any bands are going to be on here. So um, if you know of people in bands who are really into movies that you'd like to hear from, let me know to, or tell them to get in touch. Preferably people have heard of, not people who like movies from your favourite local band who've done a handful of gigs. Um, so, because basically, you know, no one's going to, inverted commas, tune in to listen to what Mr muck nobody likes to watch but you know there you go i'm pretty much the king of muck nobodies so maybe i should shut the fuck up um well how are you doing what have you been up to nothing yeah same <laughs> i'm aware some of you are working some key workers out there thank you very much really appreciate what you're doing for everybody else who's acting like heroes i doing fuck all and staying in well done um, hopefully a um, bit of extra content here and there is helping. This is going to be um, quite a long one because um, I've got a couple of guests. As I said, the two Pauls. I've got uh, Paul Waller from uh, Ohms and the Different Times podcast. And I've got Paul Chanter from Acid Rain. So um, two very different interviews. I've uh, Obviously, um, Paul and I are in a band. I've known Paul for... Um, bloody hell um, I, I think we celebrated our 30th anniversary <laughs> um, a, a couple of, yeah actually last month um, we first met at Bristol Beer Keller um, on Monday the 16th of April so I would have been 20 years old and one day fascinating stuff that um, so yeah so, and, and obviously Paul and I know we know each other's movie tastes quite well and he, so, so, so that's that's one conversation. Then you will hear the conversation with Paul, um, Paul Waller, which is very different. We know each other less well. We're both singers. We both managed to, man, we both managed to keep cramming our bands into the conversation. We keep straying from the subject. It's you know, it's basically a festival of tangents, but by the same token, still based around movies because this is movie bollocks. It's also TV bollocks. So. Um, yeah, I'm gonna. And, and I don't think I actually finished my classic questions from uh, for, for for Paul either. But anyway, so uh, movies, videos, yeah, videos. Fuck's sake, how old, how old am I? Um, movies, streaming, TV shows, anything is included in the podcast. Um, uh, and I always said I was going to give you some um, some tips. So uh, TV series on Netflix called um, uh, Dead to Me. Season one has already been on. You might see t season two has just come out as I'm uh, as I'm recording this. Definitely worth a watch. Christina Applegate is fucking brilliant and it's so sarcastic and so cutting, caustic. In fact, the episodes are half an hour long. They're great. They've got twists. They're very funny. Um, so yeah, I can definitely recommend Dead to Me. Um, I'm smashing through series two of that. I've only just discovered Rick and Morty thanks to uh, a friend of mine. So uh, apologies there, running late on that. But uh, yeah, obviously it's insane. So if you fancy a bit of insane animation, that's right up your street. Um, and a shout out, and I, I, I might have even mentioned this already, but a shout out for a TV programme on Netflix, which requires subtitles because it's in Spanish, and that is The Heist. You can watch the dubbed version, but I always prefer subtitles because um, dubbing just fucks my head in after a while, um, whereas subtitles doesn't. Depends who you are. Um, so anyway, um, I watched it. Um, I've watched all three, four seasons so far. Absolutely brilliant. Thought I was a bit of a, you know, I was a bit of a cool kid and in with the cult TV programmes. Turns out, having watched a documentary at the end of the latest season, it's the biggest show on Netflix internationally. Bigger than Stranger Things. The heist. It's insane. And the amazing thing is, there was two series of it made on Spanish TV and then it was canned. And it was stuck on Netflix. Absolutely, a catalogue of stuff was bought. It was stuck on Netflix, stuck away there. No promotion done or anything. But people found it and started watching it and wanting more. And then Netflix came back to them about two or three years after they, you know, made series season two and went any chance of season three. Now we're on to season four. It's fucking really good. Really enjoyed it. It's called The Heist. Um, and yeah, check that out. Later on, you'll hear uh, me talking about um, a movie called Possessor 
which um, which I watched with Paul. Uh, sorry, watched with Paul. Uh, I, I watched and then mentioned to Paul at the end there. Um, very good. Um, in fact, we, we talk about it a bit, so it's probably no need to mention it here. And um, I finally got round to Tiger King. And... Um, yeah, uh, it's all right. I mean, it's nowhere. I, I obviously, I, I've really just avoided all the hype. Just got round to it and watched it in my own good time. Um, and um, and I, I, I had zero. I genuinely didn't have any expectations. I thought, oh, I'll just watch this. Yeah, it's 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 all right. It's a it's a uh, uh, it's a bit long for me. I think it's, there's a lot of padding in there at times. Um, but definitely, you know, definitely worth a watch. There's some fascinating characters in there. There is some uh, weird old shit. Um, uh, you know, it's amazing how cr- crazy some people's lives are. Um, but yeah, it's definitely definitely worth a watch. Not exactly top of my list, but there you go. It depends what you're into. It depends what you're looking for at the moment in this lockdown. And I'm um, I'm kind of like in between whether to watch Gretel and Hansel yet. Um, Paul Waller has, he said, yeah, it's, it's all right, it's worth, and, and I'm not sure, so if any of you out there have, have already seen it, and um, I'm re- really on the fence about it, and um, there's so much to watch at the moment, it's kind of like I don't want to waste any time on anything that um, uh, that isn't worth it, which is, it's, is a bit sad, but it's just the way it goes at the moment, it really is, um, I, I mean, I've got to be honest, it's... Um, I'm finding it difficult. Re- something really has to grab me at the moment. It really has to grab me because there's so much out there, and I think my um, my ability to actually focus on something is yeah in the boredom. I'm struggling with it. Um, so something really has to do the business early on, and again, like you know, Ozarks, which I think um, Mr. Chanter and I will talk about um, in our interview. It's a little while ago, so we might do, we might not, but uh, yeah, Ozarks. Season three has just come out. I mean, it's great if you like anything like Breaking Bad or anything like that. I've just I've just finished the uh, finished Get Better Calls Better Call Saul, which is good um, and enjoyable. Uh, not as good as Breaking Bad. Bit odd, but there you go. Anyway, look, let's get on with an interview. Yeah, let's get a interview done. Well, I mentioned Paul there. Why not? Why not? Let's crack on and uh, let's get Acid Rain guitarist and video director, script screenwriter. You name it. We'll have a good old chat about it. Uh, this is the one and the only, my mate Paul Chanter. So this will be one of the one of the one of the first um movie podcasts that I'm doing. Tour, uh, movie bollocks. Um it took me ages to come up with that. And um uh, I have with me of Acid Rain fame Paul Chanter. Hello Paul. Hi. Hi. So basically, we've been talking to people about you know, look their 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 loves of you know their love of film and whatever, whatever love you know. Um, it's it's gonna it's gonna vary with different people, and obviously, different, yeah. everybody has uh, you know. Just coming into this series and like, who shall I approach and what do we talk about? It's like there is that I've literally got people like yourself who are who've written screenplays, who've made films, who've taught film, who've studied screenwriting and stuff like that. And I've got you at one end and then I've got like, you know, other people in bands at the other end who are just like, you know, just love movies from a fan perspective. Yeah, so, well, so, that's cool. so the, yeah, exactly. So this is where you know, it's kind of like it, it's just going to cover the whole sort of gamut, as it were. Um, mm. And um, and I know you're obviously you are you're not teaching at the moment. Um, no. But that but but that is that is your thing, um, and obviously you handle all the video for well most of the video for Acid Rain, um, not the actual videos. They were done by a friend of yours, but um, mm. obviously all of this film stuff. It has has ended up with you, you know, becoming a somebody who can teach film. Where where did that all start? Where did it? Because we've known each other for many many years, and it all seemed to sort of blossom during the kind of twenty years when we, we, we for some reason we lost touch. Um. Uh, well, or have you, or have I, you always been a? Because we watched Rambo down at yours all those fucking years ago. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, I was going to say kind of. It's. I think. Um, I think my mum is the, is to blame really for the film thing. My mum was always, always into films, um, and 
for me, you know, like for some reason, even to this day, I think that the red shoes goes on for about four hours, which it doesn't. But for me, like mum was watching one of these fucking old films and I can't watch anything on the telly because this film is still on. And the film is probably about two hours long. But to a kid, that's like a horrendously long time to yeah. not be doing something you want to do. Um, so watching films with my mum... Um, and my mum was the one who would take me to the cinema, you know. I went to the cinema with my mum to see uh, uh, Jaws. I went with my mum to see uh, Superman, uh, Superman 3, E.T., Dark Crystal. You know, I went with my mum, my you know, I went with my uncle to see Sinbad and the Eye of the Tiger. Um You know, so I, like... I, I, went, to see, I, I went to see Greece with my mum and sister. <laughs> Fucking cute to get in, cute to get in. It was awesome. Yeah, see, and that's the thing I remember, you know, and I kind of liked that. There's something about that, um, the whole that experience of, of, you don't really get it now. You don't queue to get in the cinema now because everybody gets their tickets in advance, all this kind of shit. You know, I remember queuing to see Ghostbusters. I remember queuing to see Return of the Jedi. I mean, I queuing to see Batman. I mean, do you know what I mean? And Yeah, I went, I went, to, see a, I went to see a preview with... Uh, with HFB, who you know well. I went to see a yeah. preview of um, uh, oh fucking hell, the Arnie, the Arnie film that got remade where he's on Mars. Total Recall. Total, re- total Recall. Yeah. 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 So we, we 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 went to a preview, a Thursday night preview. Remember when they right. they started happening? So yeah, basically, yeah, yeah. you'd get to see it, you know, the night before it comes out. Yeah. Yeah. And um, yeah, and we went to see that, and at the time it was like I, they'd spent that. It was like. Hollywood's biggest ever soundstage or something. They'd done, like, ridiculous effects on it. I think it was the most expensive film made at that time. Right, well. right. I knew, there was, totally the, cool. the, I knew there was something about it. Yeah, um, yeah. But well, it's a big Arnie. That's when Arnie was huge as well. So, you know, that's... Yeah, I think it was, the, like, the, I mean, the, from the director of Robocop, it's got Arnie in it, and it's the most expensive film ever made at that time. Oh, so. uh, yeah, uh, just... but, but yeah, I think the whole I think the whole the whole film thing originated with my mum, and then we got a video. Oh, we got a video. Yeah, and then and then you know and then hiring videos, hiring videos, just, just I just went fucking crazy. It was like uh, every night, every every Friday or Saturday night was, was video night. You know, you go to go and get video, and it was my brother as well because um, my brother had moved out. And was living with my granddad, but then when we we moved house and he moved back in, and and we would go to the video shop every Friday or Saturday night, get one maybe two films, and I just started digesting all this stuff. And I remember writing a list. I had a list of all the films that I'd seen. I just kept a, kept a list of all the films that I'd seen and how many times I'd seen them. Because like, sometimes I'd uh, hire a film, and sometimes you could get a film from Friday until Sunday, and I just watched it as many times as I could. Um, but then that, when I knew you and then we kind of lost, co- lost contact, that's when in that gap, that's when it turned from, I like films. I watch a lot of films. I really watch a lot of films. I started to own a lot of films. Yeah. Yeah. And then in that gap is where it's like, and then I started to read about film and started to analyze film and learn how films are made and structure and all this kind of, and then I started dabbling with writing stuff you know so it's like it, it really became um you know because i guess in that gap like the early 90s or whatever that's where the whole tarantino kevin smith independent filmmaker thing really kind of kicked off so then you were kind of you had this thing of well i guess anybody could do this really if you got some mates with a camera you know and then that's when it became like if i got interested in this enough if i learned enough about this maybe i could do this you know it seemed it wasn't unachievable um, you know, not every film was Star Wars. Like, there's no, no chance I could make that. But I could make a film about four people who sat around talking about their hideously failed relationships or whatever. You know? Yeah, yeah. Well, I well, funnily enough, I, I, you you brought back memories for me there because I remember when I was living in Newcastle when I was in Strange Thing a few years <coughs> after Acid yeah. Rain, yeah. and I was I and I had a um, uh, I had a video. Um, well, there was a, there was a shop where you could go and basically. It were it had all videos that were no longer being rented out. Basically, movies that video shops had, you know, wanted rid of, 
and this and, yeah, was, yeah. and I think they basically there was a chain had this one shop and if you went to that shop it had all the videos that they were getting rid of yeah and we just we used to go in there and like spend five quid and it's like you'd be on the dole do you know what I mean? and we were like five quid would be like a week's entertainment Jesus I sound so old and um yeah. and um uh, and we'd all buy like we'd all buy like videos, but like you know, j- shit. Do you know what I mean? Like fucking Fletch Two, and uh, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Fletch Lives. You know, yeah. Uh, yeah. What's your name, Nostradamus? Excuse me, Mister Nastro. I just remember bizarre things from that film. He sits well, on a plane, one, one sits on a other... plane, and the woman turns next to him and says, "What do you do?" And for some reason, it always cracked me up. She's like, "Oh, what do you do? What's your job?" And he just goes, "I'm a shepherd." That's, that's, that's actually from Fletch. That's not Fletch. Oh, Fletch. is it Fletch <laughs> bastard? Oh, Fletch, Fletch, li- Fletch, Fletch lives with the with the uh, the Disney musical number towards the end. I think so. Yeah. I don't know. Why don't you jump up, turn around, pick me a bailer cotton? Excellent racist joke from Chevy Chase. That. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but in in that time as well, that was the time when I. Uh, I'm just saying this. Just you know, take this as you will. Around that time, the early nineties was when I acquired two video cassette recorders. Ah. I'm, I'm leaving that as it is. Yes. <laughs> so, so my film collection, around the same time I got two video recorders, my film collection went through the roof. I'm just, you know, yeah. I'm not saying there's any connection there at all. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> but there is, isn't there? Oh, completely, yeah. Um, and, you know, my mum had Sky, so it'd be like, Mum, can you take that for me? And so, you know, that's where, that's where I got my first copy of Goodfellas, which um, I just I just drowned in that shit, just Goodfellas. And that's when I got seriously into De Niro, and, and, and I'd already had, a, had had my Jack Nicholson fate and watched everything in Jack Nicholson. And I got into the De Niro thing, and uh, that's, yeah, I watched a, a lot of stuff. Yeah, I mean it's um, it's it, well once you start once you start getting into like you know like you said your 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 um, uh, Scorsese's and stuff like that, then that's like yeah you're, yeah you're really getting into the the gold. Yeah, you know, and then I I started reading Empire magazine as well, which was kind of you know and that kind of gives you oh right okay they're talking about this person a lot then this person influential maybe I should check out some of their stuff oh and then this person. I'll check out their stuff, and you know, so you end up watching loads of loads of stuff that you know, as a what seventeen, eighteen year old kid in Devon, you're not really going to bump into a lot of this stuff. You know, you're not going to art house cinemas and stuff. But they mention somebody, and then you manage to find one copy of it in Blockbuster, and you're like, "Fuck, they've actually got it in here, cool." And yes, then, you know, that's a, that's exactly how I found I felt when I found the uh, the reflecting skin. Um, right. on on video <laughs> in, in one of those like little shops and was like yeah fucking yeah. hell you know and that, it, again though you know I, I guess it's very similar to music isn't it it's like discovering the way you used to like discover an old film or track it down yeah which yeah, doesn't exist yeah. anymore because it's the same it's the same as music yeah yeah and there's a very real there's a very real kind of different way in being um, introduced to, like, I mean, we, we, you know, we came in on the tail end of video nasties and things like that, and uh, yeah, yeah, I remember, I remember having pirate copies of um, fucking ET. I had, I, we had pirate copies of ET, Ghostbusters, and Dawn of the Dead. No, Day of the Dead, um, and they were awful. I mean, if you imagine you were watching Day of the Dead on. VHS and you deliberately fucked your tracking up on the video recorder. Yeah. That's what it looked like. But I still watched it. Oh, it was, I still it, it, watched it. My, uh, the copy I had was like that, except it was as if you were watching that copy that you had and you were stood outside the house looking through the net curtains at the TV. Yeah, yeah. yeah it was just like... It, it, it was kind of like, wasn't it? It was like, oh, I've got, I've got a copy, got a copy, got a copy, got a copy. And you get the copy and go, well, I can hardly see what's going on. Yeah, yeah, and I I still kind of carried on with that. Like I used to go to record fairs and stuff, and and you could find like bootleg videos of, like people live and stuff like that. And I remember going to one record fair, and it was around the time there was the whole um, Jamie Bolger case happened. So a lot of stuff was just banned on site, for, not for having, it had no relation to the case at all. But for some reason they banned a lot of stuff, and they banned stuff like Bad Lieutenant, you know, the Harvey Keitel one. 
and they banned True Romance and Reservoir Dogs. And, and I found True Romance and Reservoir Dogs on VHS at a record fair, and they were from a US Laserdisc. Um, there were VHS recordings of the Laserdisc. So when True Romance was originally released over here, they eventually released it, and I was like, oh, cool, I get to watch a proper version of it. I watched it, and I was, what the fuck is this? Yeah. Because it, it was a completely different edit. Yes. The, U, the UK theatrical version was a completely different edit. To, so I kept my Laserdisc version until True Romance came out on DVD. That was when the proper version was released. And um, so, it's, so it's like, nobody believed me. It's like, there's a way better, there's an even better version of this film knocking around, you know? Yeah. And if, yeah, I, that's... I mean, have you and have you always found yourself to be, you know, you're, you're you're kind of that guy. I mean, you're always like sort of, you know, you're t- totally immersed in it. If there's a, if I, I I know I'll mention a film and you'll be like, oh right, well that comes from so and so, and that was originally it was written by that guy, and then it got rewritten. <laughs> that studio's taken it over. Then they put it, parked it for a while, and now and and now it's due out. And I'm like, oh right, our trailer looks good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, you know, because I, I go to film sites and stuff, so I, I you know, uh, I, I know what's kind of coming down the pipeline kind of thing. Yes. Uh, and if stuff gets stopped or like, oh, so-and-so's been taken off of it or so-and-so was the lead and now they're not, and you know. So and stuff like that kind of interests me, just like how do we, how do we get that? Even if it's like, how do we get that? That is fucking amazing. How did they do that? Or even if it's something like Justice League, which is like, how the fuck did that happen? <laughs> you know, it's like, well, yeah. there was a huge catalogue of errors that led to that turd appearing on screen. You know, or something like, you know, I, and I, I, I almost want to punch myself in the face for saying it, but I have watched Batman and Robin too many times, and I've watched it with the commentary on as well, um, because I've wanted to hear Joel Schumacher explain what the fuck he thought he was doing. <laughs> <laughs> which he does he the first thing he does on the commentary is apologize which is like what yeah, yeah and it's true he says if i if i offended you in any way with this film i am really sorry all i intended to do was entertain and yeah it's, and, and and actually i kind of let the guy off for that because then you watch a lot, a lot of that stuff or read a lot about that he had so much pressure from the studio and toy companies it's like mate i'm trying to make a film can you fuck off with your toy designs, well, we want you to put this in the film, but it doesn't fit anywhere. Yeah, but we will be able to sell toys. Ah, oh, right, give them my skates then. I don't give a fuck. You know, it's like dealing with that, it must be a fucking nightmare. So, you know, I'm not in any way defending Batman and Robin, but it's just, I'm, in, I'm interested in, like, how the fuck did we get that? How did you go from Tim Burton to Batman and end up at Batman and Robin? Yes. You know? Or how did you get from Batman and Robin to Batman Begins? You know, that kind of thing is kind of, you know, and I, I could sit and tell you the whole story in between that because, like I said, I read this shit. I'm mean, just interested in that kind of stuff, you know. Yeah. Have, have you have you always been, like, is, has that always been the case? As I, long as I've you can think liked, of. Uh, yeah, like, as a kid, I always liked, um, like, it would, be, it would be rare you would get them on TV. TV was the only way you would get it and didn't have DVD with extra features or anything. But like if there was a making of or something like that that showed, you know, and like I was always interested in like makeup effects and, uh, you know, animatronic effects and, and special visual effects and stuff like that. Like how, how do they do that? You know, like, oh, they blew up little ships for Star Wars or like, uh, you know, I remember watching one about how they did Roger Rabbit for fuck's sake, you know, like animating and like telling Bob Hoskins, right, you have to have a closed hand when you grab something because it costs extra to animate in between your fingers. So just hold it with your fingers together. You know, just stuff like that. Just That always kind of interested me when I was a kid, like how they did that stuff. Yeah. Um, and, and I think that partly came from my mum, who uh, would explain to me, because I like horror films, I never watched horror films when I was a kid. They, fucking terrified me i just just the idea of a horror film i remember when american world london was on tv and my mum had been dying to see it i could hear it downstairs and it was flipping me the fuck out i was like mum can you turn it down 
Oh, like, bloody hell. I, yeah, I could just hear people being killed, and it just it was it stressed me right out. But then I kind of went through the whole kind of uh, was it Stockholm syndrome, where it's like right. If I learn how they make this shit, then I know. And my mum would always say, it's just makeup. It's just something with makeup on. Yeah. And then mum bought me a, a horror makeup kit for like my eighth birthday or seventh or eighth birthday. So then I, I had it done to me. So I looked like a fucking horrific mess. But it had all been put on by my mum. We were laughing when we did it. Like, all right, that's, that's all it is in that film. It's just a load of foam rubber on their face, you know. So that kind of... Ah, oh, that's how they do it. That's how they do that. That's how. They, oh, right, that shark is a big fucking model. Oh, ET is partly a little man in a costume and partly a animatronic thing. You know, it's um, just learning that kind of stuff. Um, I guess it's the same thing I've said about uh, music. Like listening to music is fine, but when I started playing guitar, it was almost like you could crawl into the song and walk around. Like you, you got to know the song on a different level. So right. with a film, you, just, you you watch all the making of stuff or read making of stuff, and, and then you kind of you appreciate the film on a, on a, on another level. Like that bit, they didn't mean to do that bit, but they carried on. Like, oh, that's class, you know. Yeah. Like I didn't I didn't know that, you know. Also, I'm 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 a big fan. I'm a big fan of watching stuff more than once as well. Oh, totally. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think I think any any film that you watch and blows you away uh, has the capacity to do that yet again the second time because now you know where it's travelling. Well, I've always said, you know, I've always said, um, yes, I've got the you know the qualified teacher film degree thing. Yes, you know, I can pontificate about films if you want and say oh, I think it's about. So this is actually a metaphor for the American political system, or whatever you know. Yeah. But when I watch when I watch a film, when I watch a film, the first time I watch a film, I am just watching a film. Like, and it finishes. That was class, or that was that was fucking terrible. Um, but I'm just watching the film, and then if it, like you said, if it's if it's awesome, I I will watch it again, and start to then I start to switch on. The, the the film degree head, you know? Yes. And it's like, ah, oh, cool, that's actually, you know, like I was watching something the other day, like, with, I don't think it's any great secret that my favourite film ever is Jaws, but um, I was watching something the other day and I'd never thought about it before. Like, the whole time, like, you meet Quint when he scratches down the chalkboard and stuff, that's the first time you meet him. The next time you see him, he's laughing at all the fishermen when they've caught the what they think is the shark. Um, and they're all on the on the on the the pier there or whatever, all celebrating because they think they've caught the shark. And Quint goes past in his boat, and he just kind of laughs. He goes past, and it's just like, oh, look at him just laughing at them because he thinks they're stupid. And I saw something the other day, and it was like he's laughing at them because, and he's in his boat. He's the only fisherman who's still in his boat because he knows that's not the shark. And it's like, I never even twigged that. All the other fishermen have come in because they call a big shark, but Quint's still out there because he's like, nah, there's no way that that's the shark. Right. And he's still out there and he's laughing at them. And I thought, that's fucking class. I'd never even thought of that before. And that's like last week on a film that came out in 1975. And how many times <laughs> would you say you've seen... <laughs> no Jaws. fucking idea. How many times have I seen Jaws? I have no idea. But like last week, I thought something new about it. You know, that's that's what's cool. And it's like, yeah, you can just watch Jaws and go, or any film, I guess. You can just watch any film and go, yeah, that's cool. It just breathes over you. Awesome. But if you want to, you know, if you want to look for stuff, if you're intrigued or interested enough to look deeper, there's there's always shit there. Well, there should be anyway. Yeah, and I think, but it's the same with um, it's just, again making that musical comparison. It's the same with songs, isn't it? You'll you you know you can hear. The best stuff is is the stuff where you've had it six months and you play it and you go, oh, I hadn't noticed that before. Um, and I, you know, I I, I, lo I love all of that. I absolutely yeah, love all yeah. of that. Um, and and you know, th but then again, there's the, you know, there'll be people listening to this, be like, look, I like I like my movies, but I I just you know, I'm not into this watching a movie again, which is which is absolutely fine. Again, there's no there's no kind of 
there's there's no laws, is there? You know, it's um, it, you know, some people will will you know just not be interested in watching a film more than once. Others will, it, 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 but it doesn't make you any less passionate about uh, you know about cinema in inverted commas, as it were. Yeah, I mean, there's like uh, you know, there was a big recent debate, like because uh, Scorsese came out and said that he didn't think uh, the Marvel oh, film yes. was, was he cinema. He doesn't think they're the cinema. Yes, yes. Now, I understand what he means. I understand what he means, but I don't necessarily agree. Yes. Um, I've I've had discussions with filmy people before about like this whole like current Marvel superhero thing, you know, and you could say I'm slightly biased because I've always been into that kind of thing anyway. But in terms of cinema, I tend to look at it like, no, they're just, no, I don't look at it as they're making films that come out every year and nearly every, you know, they're disappointed if it doesn't make a billion, you know, Marvel makes a billion every year. I look at it as, especially up to um, Avengers Endgame, that was essentially one massive story and all these films are interlinked. And yeah. it's like, I nearly went off on a Blade Runner 2049 thing, and interlinked cells, interlinked. Um, <laughs> but, um, yeah, that's, that's a huge uh, achievement that nobody has ever done before. And that is why, and like, whether you like it or not, whether you think that Marvel is cinema or not, or whether it's art or whatever, in the history of cinema, Marvel's achievement over, you know, from, from Iron Man to Endgame, that, there's no way that that will not be in any kind of textbook because that achievement is fucking astounding and yeah. never been done before. Yeah. You know, so, so whether it's art or not is, is, uh, you know, up for debate. You know, I, I enjoy a lot of them. Uh, some of them I think are a bit, you know, whatever. Um, but I think, you know, like you said about people who just, I, I, I never really look at, you know, you think, how many times you come across a person and you go, have you seen so-and-so? Yeah. Ah, oh, that bit where they did so and so, and it just ah, oh, when you know because it because of what they said earlier on, it had that different meaning, and, and they're like, yeah, I didn't see any, I didn't see any of that at all. I just, I just thought it was a good film. Yes. Like, okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I know. It was like like f- films where I've like struggled struggled to even like what was that horrendous Ryan Reynolds fucking um, uh, Michael Bay piece of shit on Netflix that came out recently. Oh, was it Six Underground or something like that? Yes. Yeah, yeah, whatever it was. Oh, fucking horrendous. I mean, I watched I watched that with a friend of mine. We we watched it and we were half an hour in and we both looked at each other and just went like, yeah, can't can't handle this. And despite the fact that it was Michael Bay supposedly doing a send up of himself. Um, right, yeah. And totally and it was just like, no, no, sorry, this is just this is just shit. It's horrendous. It's fucking it, it, it it's like yeah there's 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 taking the mickey out of yourself but but then there is just stuff like they seem to be reveling in the in the lack of um uh oh fucking hell what's the word ah when things things match up from scene to scene you make sure things match up from scene to scene continuity thank you i knew it was a c word right. and i couldn't think of it um uh, yeah <laughs> Yeah, and but it is. It's like fucking. It's almost like they're taking the piss with the continuity. Do you know what I mean? Like one minute somebody gets sprayed with blood in their face, or oh, all yeah, over them, yeah. and in the next scene, yeah. there's there's nothing on them, and it's just like it, it's clearly. And I, I know people watch it and go, "Oh, just for a laugh," and I wanted to fucking kick the telly in. Well, I thought. I, I mean, I watched. I to be honest, I fell asleep during that film. Um, but what I thought with it is that. It's it's almost like Michael Bay is going. Everything I normally do, I'm going to turn it up. So it's like it was very Michael Bay. The action in it was very Michael Bay. What you and mean, like you mean, you mean you mean like a car hitting a curb and then and then spinning five times in the air before yeah, landing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but what he did was like, right, I'm going to take everything I normally do and I'm going to dial it all up. And it's like, yeah, everybody thinks there's loads of action in my film. They're not going to believe how much action there is. But it's almost like he went, and people think there isn't much story in my film. There's going to be no story in this. Yes. <laughs> he just took it to. But the thing is, I will argue till the end of time that The Rock is a fucking awesome action film. <laughs> right, okay. But that is Michael Bay 
starting out. Like Bad Boys is Michael Bay starting out. You know, Armageddon is where it started to get a bit. Whoa, that's fucking what you're going to put fucking oil drillers on a meteor. Okay, you know that's when it started to get a bit. Oh, that's a bit far fetched for my liking. But but The Rock, I think that's a fucking awesome film. But the main reason for The Rock being awesome is the one-liners, and the one-liners were written by the two guys who wrote Porridge for fuck's sake. So you know that's that's why that film's got really good dialogue in it. Yeah, it's it's just that it, I I just you know and yet other people like I said have been like oh yeah you know that was harmless enough wasn't it? It's like no, it was horrendous. But then me and you said this the other day. We were talking about uh, Parasite. Yes. Oscar, oh, multiple Oscar winning Parasite. But neither of us thought was much cop. And the thing is, it's like we both said that we we came to an agreement that you can't say it's a shit film. It's not a shit film. It's not written badly. It's not performed badly. It's not directed badly. It's not shot badly. It just didn't necessarily click for you, you know? Yes. And I think, like like I just said about, I think The Rock is an awesome action film. There'll be something saying, what? That is a fucking pile of shit. It's Nicolas Cage for fuck's sake. Nicolas Cage before he went mental, but yeah. You know, it's like, it's hard to say that film is shit because so much effort goes into the making of a film that it's, it, yes. it's like there were some people there who really, somebody somewhere really thought this was worth the effort, you know? Yeah. And that's the thing. It's, uh, that's the thing that's sometimes astounding. Somebody somewhere thought it, this was worth giving money to, but you know, it was still a lot of horror films these days seem to be uh, on that well, scale. Uh, well, it's funny you should go. It's funny you should go there because um, um, I think there's there is there's horror films that, and, and again, I don't want to sound like a totally old bastard, but we'll do anyway. <laughs> there's, there's horror films that we saw when we were growing up. Stuff like I'll never forget the the film that comes to mind is straight off the bat is City of the Living Dead, where a girl is stared at by the ghost of a dead preacher. And as he's staring at her, she starts crying blood and then her entire um, intestines and organs all come out of her mouth. <laughs> and, awesome. And then, and then she collapses like, an, like, you know, like a, an empty carrier bag of skin. And, uh, um, yeah. and, um, and I was like, it, it was fucking horrific. It was like... You know, you know, you 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 all arrange, you manage to get hold of this video, and oh, brilliant! I, and then you finally get to watch it, and it you, and it scares the living shit out of you all, and you're just like, <laughs> "Fuck me! Why was I so excited about that? I'm terrified now." Um, yeah. But but again, like there's there's watching that, and 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 horror has over the years, and certainly probably. Um, Blair Witch around them, and which again, I, I thought Blair Witch was fantastic when it came out, and I think you know everyone's rewritten history now and decided it was shit. It's like no, all of the films that have come afterwards have been shit. That one's just yes. that yes. one was a fucking great yes. idea. Also, a brilliant comedy sketch by Rory Bremner. Instead, it was called Witch Blair Project, um, oh, and, was, and was when Tony Blair was in charge. But I digress. Um, there, there seems to have been a real shift to basically just uh, films that make you jump as opposed to films that scare you. Yes. You know, um, horror, horror, true horror, and then jump scares. Well, it's because true horror it involves uh, skill. Yes, um, yeah, an atmosphere. Be, and, and yeah, yeah, but what is the thing? It involves skill on so many levels. It needs to be well written it be well performed it needs to be well edited it needs to be well shot it needs to be well directed um whereas a jump scare a jump scare isn't a horror film you know it's a, a jump scare is not a scare you're essentially just, you've just been surprised yes yeah you, you've um, been made you, jump you're not, you? you've been made just no not, different not, somebody coming in the kitchen and going Wah! yeah you haven't been scared you've just been surprised it'd be the same if if, if a tin rolled off the workshop and landed on the floor that he's behind you You've just jumped. You've just been surprised. And normally you're just surprised by a loud noise. Yeah. Like in, you know, uh, the majority of horror films these days, it's just the loud sting noise. Yeah. Uh, and something occurs on screen. Something appears on screen suddenly that you didn't think was 
he didn't know was there or didn't think was going to turn up. Now, sometimes they're really signposted, and it's a, and it's a giveaway that um, you know you'll have uh, the screen and um, you know there's somebody stood completely on the far left or far right of the screen. And it's like right, okay, and it's been silent for too long, which means something is probably going to pop up on the other side of the screen. It's just it's just a, a giveaway, and that kind of thing comes from stuff like Friday the 13th, Halloween, stuff like that, where it was like initially that kind of thing set up. But, you know, the whole the whole jump scare thing, I think, comes from, I, th- I think part of its roots lie in something like um, uh, Carrie, you know, the end of Carrie. Yes. Um, or even, you know, I, 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 I think the idea of the, the, the sound, there's, there's a thing that, that can be done with the score in horror films. Um, because naturally, uh, as as humans, you're kind of conditioned to to fear certain things. So obviously, you're scared of the dark and the unknown stuff. You know, that's like Jaws, say for example, you don't know what's under there. That's why it's scary. Um, but there are there are sound things. So like a low sound, a low rumble is unappealing to a human because it it remind it it reminds you kind of like. Uh, yeah. Your um, your uh, primal brain of a growl, yes. of an animal yeah, growl, yeah. and a high pitched noise is an alarm kind of sound. So you'll notice most horror film scores do both. So they'll have a low, there'll be a low rumble, and the, and the strings will go really high. Yeah, to put you in that this is not right. There is something wrong here, and then that's. You know, just just that in itself can be unsettling. But then they go for the, you know, and that big the stinger noise that will come with a jump scare has the low end and the high end to hit you exactly in that, you know, right in the cod. If that's what sets you off, you know. But it is just a jump. Whereas um, genuine kind of horror, and it's then you're getting back to this when you blur the line between suspense and horror because the suspense is what the fuck is going to happen here? I don't know what's going to happen here this is horrible I don't like it you know and 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 you want that payoff in the end where it, they think the jump scare is the payoff because you get to release that immediately but I think even something like The Exorcist where I think one of the one of the most horrific bits in that film is when she's in the hospital and they're doing tests on her because the machine that the scanning her makes a horrible fucking noise and yeah. it's mixed really loud and it just comes in really suddenly. Just the smash cut from like the quiet house to this fucking machine making this horrible noise and her being injected in the neck and shit like that. It's just, it's fucking horrible. Way more horrible than, you know, books flying around the room and heads spinning around and all that kind of shit. But the exorcist is, is, is shows you that use of, sounds suddenly happening yeah and i think that's where a lot of this jump scare stuff came from but then uh, it became an over-reliance to the point that the exorcist face was used on uh, on the internet you know you, you get set, sent that maze thing that you meant to do and then all of a sudden her face appears and it's a big scream you ever get that email yes yeah 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 that is what started the jump scare that <laughs> i reckon that's well, because it's like you can scare somebody with just a noise and something appearing. So like, okay, we'll, we'll do that in a film then. Yeah, but it wasn't. I, I mean, funnily enough, just thinking about it, wasn't wasn't um, uh, Blair Witch a major a major kind of factor as well? Um, because that was more about being made jump by stuff you couldn't even see either. See, Blair Witch. Blair Witch is slightly more sophisticated in the fact that Blair Witch scares you because of, you don't you don't see anything. Yes, yeah, and you don't know, and it's the fear of that. It's the fear yeah, of the, what you the, don't the, know. Is, yeah, that's what works. That's 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 working really well. That's scaring people with what they can't see. You know, like I keep going back to it, but like Jaws, you don't see the shark for like an hour, forty forty five minutes, something like that. But you know it's there because you're and you're scared because you know it's there, but you don't know where it is. And, yeah, you're, and it's but the same you, with the Blair Witch. But you're you almost you're stuff. almost dreading seeing it as well. 
aren't yeah. you? You kind of yeah. it's 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 re- it's, it's built up. Well, Blair Witch and and similarly Jaws and other things like that, I guess as well. That um, you you know that there is this thing that is horrible and dangerous, and and it shouldn't be around humans, but you don't know where it is. And then you hear something that gives you an indication that, oh, fuck, there's something around. And in Blair Witch, it's weird noises in the woods. And in Jaws, it's the Jaws theme. You know, so you get this indication of like, oh, fuck, there is something around. But they, you know, I'm, I'm not c- comparing. I, I will never hold the Blair Witch up as high as Jaws. But they are doing very similar things. They're both working with nothing. And they're achieving a lot you yeah, know, they're working with very little and achieving you know, big gains with what they've got. Whereas these days, you know, it's just, oh, look, it's a scary doll. You know, this Annabelle thing. It's like, yeah, that, that doll already looks fucking terrifying. Who the fuck, apart from your mum, would have a doll like that in their house? Yeah, yeah, apart from my mum, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Who has terrifying it's dolls like, in the house, yes. look fucking horrible. Yeah. Um, you've already kind of taken... The element, like clearly, there is something wrong with that doll because it looks horrific. Well, it's, it's it, taken the element away. Well, that, that's that's all. That's Stephen King's problem with um, uh, with The Shining, isn't it? Is the casting? He just thinks like Jack Nicholson basically looks insane from minute one. Yeah, yeah. And that's yeah, that's that is his entire problem with it. Well, yeah. Entirely. I mean, he, there's there's a lot of stuff that's changed in the in the film from the book as well that he wasn't happy about. But yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, like saying that you look at Jack Nicholson, you already think the guy is unhinged, which could partly be the thing anyway. But the, was the guy already unhinged, or was it the hotel that did it to him? You know, there's yeah, there's but a shining I, is a whole fucking whole. I mean, there's a whole it's a whole well, kind it of already, it's a whole nest of vipers. <laughs> yeah, well, there's a whole documentary on that, um, which throws many uh, many a bizarre theory out about the shining. Some some are like. Yeah, okay. Well, well, look, while we're on the subject, what did you think to um, Dr. Sleep? Doctor, Doctor, Doctor Sleep, can you help me, Doctor Sleep? (laughs) Oh, God. Um, I thought it was uh, uh, not needed. Yeah. I think The Shining is is astoundingly Uh, self-contained. I don't think in uh, book and film, I don't think, I I don't think, I'm talking about Doctor Sleep, I don't think the book or the film of Doctor Sleep needed to be done. Mm-hmm. Um, when I heard he was doing it, I was like, oh, fucking hell, really? You're going back to that well? Why? You know? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's going back a long way, isn't it? Yeah, um, and and you should only go back that far if you've really got, I've really got something I can add to that. If this is a fucking great idea. I'm sure he thought the idea was great, you know. But um, in terms of the film, I um, I thought it was, a bit, it's more intelligent than most horror films these days. Um, but the only bit that really stuck with me... Have you seen it? Uh, yes, yeah, yeah. And I, 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 again, I, I thought the same as you. It was just, it was just thoroughly, thoroughly unnecessary, really. Um, the, only, the only bit yeah. that stuck with me is when, right. um, is when they kill that kid. Yeah. Because it's... Fucking harsh. Yes. They, they don't yeah. just kill him off screen. They fucking really do him over right there on the screen. Yeah. And I was like, yeah. that is... You don't see much uh, child death <laughs> in, in films these days. And, and they had the balls to go there. And I was like, that, well done. Well done. Yeah, it was... Um, yeah, yeah it, I mean, like I so said, it was all right. But it's like, uh, I when, after I watched it, I thought I just kind of felt like, well, I've done that. I was just about to say, you know, we talked about watching films again. I have not bothered to watch it again. I'm just like, no, I'm not, not fussed about that. I don't. It didn't intrigue me enough to watch it again. Um, I didn't think it was awful. It's just like, yeah, completely. I've seen that. Okay. <laughs> yeah. It's it's up there with uh, it in terms of right. Okay, they exist then. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I'm not really. Uh, I, d- I didn't really. Get, well, I haven't even bothered with with the second it. Yeah, it's um, just not not a horror film. Just not scary. Just just not. You know, I 
I liked I liked the first one. The only thing I liked about the first one was a really foul mouth kick because you don't see that in films these days. Um, Certainly not enough. Well, there's a film called the I think it's called the Good Boys, which is kind of like a, a an even like if you imagine super bad, but they're like oh um, yes five, five years younger or something, which actually stars the kid who gets ripped apart in uh, Doctor Sleep. Um, and then they were really foul mouthed kids. And that's what I liked about it was that, you know, they were foul mouthed kids saying really politically incorrect stuff to each other. Because um, they were kids. It just, reminded me, it just reminded me of being a kid. When, you know, it just reminded me of when I was a kid. Everybody just saying the most outlandish shit to each other, trying to get the worst insult in. Yes. And then every so often this fucking clown thing comes up. And it's like Pennywise just isn't scary. You know, if you're scared of clowns, then maybe. But, you know, I still think that, you know, uh, what's he called? Mr. Jelly <laughs> from, uh, from uh, Psychoville was a, is a scary looking clown. <laughs> I said, Mr. Mr. Stay Puffed from Ghostbusters is is more frightening. I, I've got to be honest, I mean, um, for me, when it, com- when it comes to horror, um, actually, we, I, we've spent, we've spent a, a, a fair amount on horror. Let's um. Should we give Quentin Tarantino a fucking kicking? Ah <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear! It just reminded me of when I was doing my degree. Every time Tarantino was mentioned, a, a couple of people in the group would just turn around and look at me because they knew that it would just start winding me up as soon as Tarantino was mentioned. Well, yeah, him and his a massive banana chin. Well, we we I know we've spoken about this for yeah the only the only man whose chin makes Bruce Campbell's look normal, um, mm. the the he he is somebody that um, I think we're we're almost identical opinions on this, which is basically um, he breezed onto the scene um, with possibly one of the tightest, best edited, best scripted movies. I've ever seen, which is Reservoir Dogs. I mean, there is not a fucking inch of fat on that at all. And you know, I, I, I'd like, I'd like to direct everybody to see City on Fire. I think, well, uh, yes, a Hong Kong yeah, film. But, yeah, um... yeah, yeah. There, there, there is that. And unfortunately, <laughs> but, but what we didn't know at the time was that that was going to be a theme in Tarantino's career. That, that, but ultimately, that... that ultimately, you would find out who he'd ripped off years later. After making I think it, if he'd, I think if he'd come about ten years later when the internet was around, there's no way he would have got as big as he got because everybody was on. That's a well, good if point. You look online, this guy, he's just ripped everything off. Well, it's that, like, but at that time, yeah, you wouldn't you wouldn't see fucking Hong Kong stuff unless you fucking ordered it in or had some astounding world cinema section in your blockbuster, which no blockbuster ever had. Well, and you know, and, so. and unless you read, unless you read, um, unless you read Empire. You wouldn't know. Yeah, you, yeah, wouldn't, yeah. you wouldn't know anything about the fact because they did a whole fucking article on it. Um, oh, totally, yeah. But but also, it's like that started out brilliant. Um, the, the high point being um, uh, Pulp Fiction, which does drag slightly in places, and then the beginning of the end, Jackie Brown, which <laughs> which is which which is it's it's watchable, but already you're going, hang on, Quentin, aren't you showing me the same film from three different angles? Um, yeah. I, this is this is like basically three films cut it out, and then from there on, it's just like right. Well, you can lose anything up to an hour from just about everything he's done since. Yeah, I mean, Reservoir. I I I still think that Reservoir Dogs is, is his best film. I, I yeah. think it's better yeah. than Pulp Fiction. I think it's more compact. It's tight as fuck. It's it's got a real uh, sense of tension to it. it um, it's got a, it, it's got it, a brilliant know, like sense of camaraderie as well. That Yeah, I mean, he, he, everything that he needs to achieve in that film, he does it really well. And he's got, and he might not have like, it might not have even then had the, like the, the most well-known cast, uh, especially then. Um, but they are all, they are all perfect. And they work perfectly together. And they also, uh, bash up against each other perfectly so that you know you've got, you got scenes with like Harvey Keitel and, and Chris Penn you know like just having a laugh and taking the piss in the car telling stories about people gluing their dick to their stomach or whatever yeah but then at the end when he's like uh, stop pointing that fucking gun at my dad you're like these two were, were really mates yes and look at them now and yeah. I, th- I think I, if 
Reservoir well, Dogs is just such a, a, a it's taught. It's a taught film. No, oh, um, beautiful. Good work. It's very. It's very. Um, it's tense. It's fast. Like you said, it's like, a, it's like an hour and a half. It doesn't fuck around. And that's the problem with Tarantino. His film, his films have got longer and longer. I think I said this to you before that his his editor, he had the same editor for for years. She was called Sally Sally Menk, I think, and she died. It might have been after Jackie Brown, I think. Right. Um, and after, the, and I think she was the one who would kind of rein him in a bit, like really, do, do you need to? Do you need to leave it that long? Because you she's known him, yeah. Because because obviously she's edited his stuff since he was fucking nobody and really didn't have much of a say. Yeah. Um, so he'd listen to her. And and in that time as well, he became Tarantino. You know, he became a verb. You know, so it's yeah. like, uh, no, we'll leave that in because it's very me. Oh fuck you! You know, <laughs> and then you get stuff, and you start to get stuff like. Even Jackie Brown starts to push it for a while. It's like, really, you could do with, right, okay, we don't need to hear this song again. Um, and then Kill Bill, right, okay, it's debatable whether you could have just smashed those two together and edited the fuck out of it and made it a really intense, fucking hardcore revenge film that really goes balls out from beginning to end. Two hours, two hours, 15. You yeah. could have made a really fucking tight film there. It's debatable. I still think the end of Kill Bill is weak as fuck. Um, and then after that, you got oh, it's just it's just a, a litany of fucking bullshit, really. Um, oh, Inglorious Bastards after that, which I, I still think Inglorious Bastards is all right, but you don't see much of the bastards doing what the bastards do, which is unfortunate. Um, but I do like Inglorious Bastards for what it is. I just wish it's kind of a film like oh, you should you should have done a sequel to that where they just go out on a mission and just do fucking just kill loads of Nazis and shit. The only thing that lets Inglourious Bastards down is fucking Eli Roth turns up in it. Well, um, well, you see, the thing for me about I- I- Inglourious Bastards was I quite, I quite, I kind of enjoyed it. Um, mm. I went to see it at the cinema and then um, it's not survived repeat viewings. Second time I watched it, I got about three quarters of the way through it and I just found myself going, yeah, um, for a start, opening scene, um, Christoph Waltz, the Jew Hunter, absolutely yeah. brilliant. The first yeah. time you see it, the second time you see it, you go, "Oh, I didn't realise how bloated this was," because initially, yeah. initially on first watch, you have the tension, you yeah. have the tension yeah. of knowing what's mm. down below. But it's one of those scenes that falls apart on second viewing because, well, I I knew everything about this scene I needed to know the first time. But the mm. first time I watched it, I didn't know where it was going. So it had me. Now I do know where yeah. it's going. So this scene is 20 fucking minutes. Yeah, yeah. Which yeah. on initial viewing is awesome and powerful. And on second viewing is, yeah, I know where this is going. Can we, can we get there a bit quicker? Yeah, I mean, you know, do you make a film to be... Third, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, hands up. Viewed I, multiple yeah. times? Yeah. I mean, yeah, I get say, like, a film like Sixth Sense is... You can watch that multiple times knowing what the ending is because you're like, oh, for fuck's sake, I never noticed when he comes in because he's late for his That's meal it. with her yeah. that he doesn't even yeah. move the Bru- chair when he sits uh, down. He Bruce, Willis is a, Bruce Willis is a ghost, in case you haven't seen it. Um, just wanted to ruin that for you. <laughs> uh, but like, you can watch that back and see like there's loads of indicators. Once you know what the twist is, it's like... Fuck, it's plain as day, but I never fucking noticed, you know. Yeah, absolutely. But I I'm, don't think yeah, you know, I have that with. That, well, a film, a film that is not comparable to that at all, but has the same thing for. And I don't, I'm not going to give away the twist, but I didn't see it coming at all. Is well, a favourite of ours, Dead Man's Shoes. All oh, right, yeah. Uh, I mean, the first you, what film is I not to, for my students? I mean, you've got well, there you go. I mean, you've got Paddy Considine being maximum Paddy Considine, probably my favourite role he's ever done. Um, it's definitely up there. I mean, um, did you see Journeyman? Yes, which is awesome. Yeah, I mean, he's... He, he's uh, yeah, Dead Man's Shoes is probably his best... One of his best performances, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Um, but that film... Has yeah, it has the same kind of thing. Like you watching it, and you're like, ah, oh, fucking. When you when you know what, and I'm not going to give it away. 
when you know what the end is, you can watch that back and be like, "Yeah, this is this is really cool." And I'm also getting a deep insight into the workings of this guy's mind right now as well, which you don't realise you're getting when you watch it for the first time. Yes, uh, you just think you just think oh, this is a conversation between two people or whatever. But you know, when you watch it back, you're like, "Fucking hell, this is uh, okay." <laughs> um. And for a film that was made, you, and this is the thing, you know, you get something like if we go back to what you were saying about like Michael Bay and that fucking thing that he made. Yeah. And Dead Man's Shoes. It's like Dead Man's Shoes will punch you right in the gut and it costs fuck all to make. Yes. You know, in the scheme of things, you know, it still costs a lot of money. Um, but I mean, like, if, you, but if, you were to, if you were to break down the plot of... Dead Man's Shoes. I mean, it's really nothing fucking special. It's 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 a, it's a western, basically. Yeah, but I mean, but I mean, it fits on the back of a fag packet, no problem, doesn't it? Do you know what I mean? It's li- it's literally most, like most good films should. Yes, yeah, the log line. Yeah, I mean, like when we did um, screenwriting in our um, when I did my degree, we did a screenwriting module, and I was already, you know, I'd, I'd already done screenwriting stuff anyway and um, part of the thing was we all had to write like a 30 page script but part of the uh, module was you had to pitch your script you'd stand up front in front of everybody else and and pitch your idea right okay what are you going to write what's your story and 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 people didn't get it or, or like you know what what is the theme of your story you know, like uh, Jurassic Park, like man versus science. You know, Jaws, man versus animal. It's that simple. Yeah. Um, and then you then you have your your your, your uh, log line or whatever, which would be like your tagline or whatever. But you know, uh, there's the the elevator pitch. You know, which is like you, you know you have three minutes. You you've walked into an elevator. Steven Spielberg is in there. And you say, oh, you're Spielberg. Yeah, oh, you're a filmmaker. Yes, I am. Do you have any ideas? Yes, I do. You go, until that lift gets to the top to tell Steven Spielberg your idea and you have to fucking sell it. And that's your three-minute pitch. That's the elevator pitch. If you can sum it up and capture somebody's, fucking hell, that sounds class. I want to know more about that or I can already see that, even though you've only told me this, then you, you pitch that film well, you know? Yeah. And I think you can do that with, you know, something like Dead Man's Shoes, but, you know, the Michael Bay thing, I can't remember what it was about. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Well, that's a film I've already seen, not one I have to pitch to somebody. So, yeah. Well, um, well look, one, thing, um, one thing I wanted to, um, uh, I wanted to kind of um, finish up with was um, some simple things that I'm going to speak to everybody about. So... Right. So basically, some some simple final questions. So, quick fire round. Quick fire round. Yes. If you get any of these cool. wrong, lose points. Um, cool. Uh, favorite director. Oh, I know. Um, it used to be. It, it it would. I would have said Scorsese straight out. Um, I probably probably. Still would actually. I mean, but there, there are a lot of directors. It's more. It's more the work. Well, I, well, I, I am going to open it up for you. I want favorite, okay. but I also want current favorite director, as in somebody who is like you know, consistently putting out movies. That not a Scorsese who puts a movie out once every three or four years. I mean, somebody who's yeah. like, you know, somebody you'd say, look, it's worth checking their stuff out because they rarely make a bad film. Oh fucking hell! Um, um, I don't, I don't know really. There's you do, kind of. You do. <laughs> um, well, my, well, mine, and I, and I'm going to say this, but I, I, I think it, I might be wrong. I might be right. It might play towards yours. Mine's Denny Villeneuve. Um, oh fuck! Right? Yeah. 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 Cause, yeah. Because basically, mean... check his fucking films out. Well, the thing is, he, I mean, he he works a lot with uh, Roger Deakins, so everything yes. looks fucking amazing. But he also has uh, he yeah, see that somebody has a sense of taste, you know, like fucking watch Prisoners if you've never anybody listening who's not seen Prisoners, do yourself a favour and you know tell people to fuck off for two and a half hours or whatever and watch Prisoners because it's it's a 
astoundingly paced, it's astoundingly acted, it's scored well, yeah. it's a shot amazingly, Deacon, obviously. Um, but they, yeah. well, there, there's, there's, there's these sort of three films, there's that, there's Arrival, and there's Blade Runner 2049. And, I mean, they are three massively different movies, but... Mm. Just, just absolutely incredible. I mean, I, I right I, again. I don't know if I'm right, I don't know if I'm wrong, or it's just an opinion. But for me, he, it's like it's like watching an old school filmmaker working in modern times. It's like he, he, he does. He, he's not in any rush to tell his story. You know, it's like Blade Runner twenty forty nine is a prime example whereby there is there's just no rush. And and he's happy to he, he's a filmmaker who's a, who seems to be allowed by studios that he's happy to allow audiences to be confused. I think I think what it is is that he's happy with. You know, I like to give the audience some credit, and I like to think yes, and some mystery. People are going to be watching my film. Yes, yeah, yeah, he's, he, yeah. He's, he will allow he will allow things to be left on screen for audiences to figure out. Which is very, I mean, his, very his rare. Run, his run from like, I don't know if this was the complete run or this was the order or whatever, from like Prisoners, um, Enemy, Sicario, uh, Blade Runner 2049. You're like, Jesus Christ. That's just just those. Yeah. Arrival, like, throw so, Arrival so, in there as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, just those films are all so different, but all fucking impeccably directed, you know. Um so yeah, I I kind of yeah I forgot about that. But like directors, I kind of you know because you you think of a film director and I immediately go Spielberg. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know because because they're kind of like the big the big fucking guys, you know. But um, yeah, no, his his stuff is is always worth worth looking at. Definitely, it definitely. is. And it's the thing is, it's for me as well. It's just it's so. Um... Oh, it's just it's so it's so brilliantly done, and like I said, it reminds me of reminds me of another era. Um, in yeah, his, in a way, I guess. Yeah. You know, in his his willing. Well, even the fight scenes in Blade, Blade Runner twenty forty nine, the way he does fight scenes, he choreographs fight scenes like like people used to choreograph fight scenes twenty or thirty years ago. Yeah, not yeah. waving the camera around. Yeah, yeah, not putting the camera around. in the middle of the fight and you not knowing what the fuck's going on. Yeah, um, yeah. you know, in other words, Michael Bay. Um, but uh, yeah. yeah, just just I, I, I yeah, I'm, I'm you know I'm going off on it, but I, yeah, I like the guy's <laughs> stuff. I fucking like the guy's stuff. Right, anyway, um, favorite genre. I don't have one. Fine. Um, and if, if it's it, if it's a good film, yeah, you know. yeah, no, I'd, absolutely, um, acceptable answer. Um, favorite movie ever, easy one. Jaws, definitely. Um, favorite male actor, favorite female actor. Now, like it, w- <laughs> it's really hard because like De Niro was like the fucking guy for me. Yeah, like everything he did was just even in films that people probably haven't seen, shit like Falling in Love with Meryl Streep and and, and shit like that. It's just everything he did. Pride and Glory. Pride and Glory, even what a great movie. Even in something like uh, Midnight Run, it's fucking amazing in that. But it's it's no secret that De Niro was kind of uh, toasted for, well, since he did Meet the Parents, I think. <laughs> um, yeah, Dirty Grandpa. But, it, but, it's hard, but it's hard to ignore the work that he did before. But in terms of like actors now, that I'm like, I will watch what... What they did, um, Jake Gyllenhaal, I think, is oh, that's a great shout. Is astounding. Um, I've always, I've always got time for Sam Rockwell. I fucking yeah. love yeah. Sam Rockwell. Um, who else? Um, oh, I don't know. There probably is one, but I can't, I can't think. Um, but yeah, Jake Gyllenhaal, Sam I'm Rockwell. T- yeah, I think. Um, oh, Denzel rocks for me. Anything he's in. DiCaprio is actually. Oh shit! He, yeah, he's 
I mean, he gets he he has been labelled kind of the pretty boy thing. But if you think about some of the films he's done, he's he's done some substantial work. Um, oh yeah, he's he's a he's a he's a proper fucking actor. Christian Bale. Oh god, the list is endless, isn't it? Yeah. Well, you know, it's it's it's. I'm not just picking films that are, oh, you just picked him because he did Batman. It's not just Batman. It's stuff like fucking Three Tens of Humor and The Machinist. Yeah. You know, he's, yeah. he's, he's done he's done other work. Um, what's it called? Out of the Furnace. Rain of Fire. Um, <laughs> Rain of Fire is a cracker. <laughs> you know, that just oh, we, that we love, we love the odd wa- all, we love the odd watch just, of that round here, don't we? <laughs> it just proves that Christian Bale or Matthew McConaughey <laughs> can't grow a decent beard. That's that's the thing I took away yeah, from that. And film. and that Gerard and Gerard Butler's never been able to act. He can't even play Scottish. Yeah. <laughs> never and mind. even like uh, you know Christian Bale in uh, Ford vs Ferrari, I thought he was fucking awesome in it. Absolutely oh, he's great. awesome. He is yeah. right. Female um, female well, actor. Now, see now this is difficult because oh I don't know I'm going to sound like Sid the sexist. <laughs> 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 <I'm not> just... <laughs> well, she's well fit. Yeah. Um, uh, no, what... I uh, I would have to put. Um... Oh fucking hell! This is actually really difficult. <laughs> I'll give you a starter for one. Uh, for for me, anyway. Um, uh, Rosamund Pike. I always. Oh, I, I do gravitate yeah. towards watch, and she's fucking awesome. Um, in oh yeah, it's gone again. Fuck me, that movie that she made <laughs> with uh, with with um, uh, with the Ben who's not still a <laughs> fuck me. What is this like? I can't uh, believe you said you can't remember the name of the film, and you said it's gone again. Oh, of course. <laughs> the film Gone, gone Girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gone Girl. <laughs> fucking hell, what a knob. Um, yeah, and she's just like deliciously fucking evil in that film. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, but I, I, <laughs> she's got a bit of a wonky eye, which just really puts me off. Um, I, I Scarlett Johansson's done some cool stuff. Oh man, the, but the female performance of last year for me in Jojo yeah. Rabbit, Scarlett Johansson's yeah. fucking amazing in that film. Yeah. Yeah. Well, to me, um, she is. I mean, I just fell in love with her in that movie, and I just think it's fucking incredible, and nobody else seems to agree, so fine. But, I yeah. think if you don't come out of that film wanting Scarlett Johansson to be your mum, then there's something wrong with you. Oh, man, is there not? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and if they, you know, well, yeah, I don't, I'm, I don't want to say any more about, about that, because it will be a bit of a... Oh, do you know what? We, we, you, before we go, because that was like, the, that's, that, that's the end of the standard questions, but... Let, let's finish off because I know we've spoken about this and we're we're, pro, we're we're flying in the face of all other movie podcasts. Um, neither you nor I um, uh, uh, were particularly impressed with Parasite. Oh, well, we talked about it briefly earlier on. Yeah, um, yeah. This is what we're saying. That, um, you know, you can't say it's a shit film, but it just it just it didn't. I thought it was okay. Um, I, I I did. I thought it was all right, but then but then when I read um, from people who got a lot more out of it than you or I, um, mm. I just think, wow, right, okay, that I just never ever saw that, felt that, even hinted at that. Do you know what I mean? It's like, yeah. right, no, something massively bypassed me here because I just did not fucking get it. But this is what I was saying earlier about, you know, some, uh, first off, I will just watch a film and then I'll watch it and start to take in, oh, this is what they were saying. Oh, that's uh, hinting at so-and-so and that gives a hint at the theme and whether yeah. that's shot. Um, and I haven't watched Parasite again um, because the first time I watched it, I just thought it was OK. Um, it might be that I watch it again at some point because somebody I know hasn't seen it and they want to watch it. And I'm like, yeah, all right, I'll watch it, yeah. Um, but um, yeah, I just, I, I, I just, yeah, just, yeah. I think that sums it up. Just, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Have you seen Parasite? Yeah. What do you think? 
Yeah. It's, it's literally that, I think. It, but and it is, isn't it? It's, people just it's go all right. mental at me. Yeah, yeah. It didn't, it didn't uh, really wave my flag that much, but, you know, not every film has to, I, I guess. You know? It's not like... Um, I know people who just won't watch it on principle because they've got to read it. Um, and it's not that at all. Um, I just, uh, you know, I thought it was all done really well. Like I said, I thought it was all done really well. It's like directed really well, performed really well, but written really well. Just, it, there's something about it that didn't click with me. And, and that's probably more clearly, evidently, it's more a problem of mine than anybody else's. <laughs> well, I, and I'm the same. It didn't click with me. Um, but having said that, also what didn't click with me, another film I saw last year, and I'm not sure if you've seen this. Have you? Well, we've already talked about it. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, have you watched it yet? Yes, yes, I have, yeah. Ah, right, when? I've watched have... it multiple times. Did you have a spare day? <laughs> um, uh, you've watched it multiple times? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, right, yeah. so you didn't hate it as much as me then? Um, I know why you hated it. It's that, it's that one trip Nothing that happens. in the car. Nothing happens. He, it takes him about four minutes to get home. Yeah, and this is what I was saying earlier on. He just needs somebody to rein him in. Like, do we need to see all that? I know why we saw that, because he's giving a sense of place, because, it's, you know, the, the production design on that film was fucking insane. Yeah. And uh, the streets were changed to look like, you know, L.A. in the 70s or whatever. And he wanted to show all that shit off, you know, in late 60s. Yeah, but, and, and um, but that's what it felt like. It felt like being tapped on the shoulder by an annoying cunt going, oh, look at that, look at that, look at that. See what I did there? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, and, you know. but the thing is, I I mean, I, I I don't know what you got out of it, and I'm I'm going to be very interested to find out because uh you know I, I, every people who did enjoy it seem to be on this oh what a beautiful recreation of the era what a beautiful recreation of Hollywood and the seventies and the relationship between a lead actor and his stuntman which people don't realise was a big thing back then and basically you it, it seems you need to have a huge hard on for that era of the 70s and Hollywood, or you ain't going to get it. Uh, it's definitely his kind of love letter to everything that he grew up with, I think. Um, you know, I've heard people say, why is Margot Robbie in, in it at all? And, and, the fact um, that, uh, and the fact that she's basically, when she's in it, she's basically, her role is to just giggle like a fucking child. Yeah, and I think, you know, I partly agree with that. There is the other theory that... Um, the reason she is like that, the reason that she doesn't do anything, she just goes to parties and just has a great time, is that she is supposed to be uh, the symbol of that's how it was, and and it wasn't going to be that anymore. Um, so you're kind of watching somebody who is that kind of uh, the embodiment of, uh, this, I guess, the studio system and all that kind of stuff, Hollywood in that period. Um, on the face of it, though, when you watch it, just... Like as I said, you just watch it as a film. It's like, what is she, what is she do? Is she, what is she going to do? She's not going to do. And I, I guess, spoilers. Um, yeah, you're watching it like, well, she's going to die. That's why we're watching it. We're supposed to be falling in love with this character, and then she's going to get killed. Yeah, and you know, spoiler, she doesn't. Well, like, spoiler, ca- she she did. Spo- um, spoiler. Um, it's not the first time that Quentin Tarantino has decided to rewrite actual history. Yeah, and and in Quentin's and, world, to, to Hitler's dead. It's a completely different place where he lives. Yeah, I know. It, it's it's kind of that's that's almost. Uh, it's 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 which one of those is more egregious? You know, it's like do you, do you <laughs> the guy who kills Hitler, or, get, or, or, or or do you know what I mean? Like, I, I I think I, I think I know which is more egregious to historically fuck with. <laughs> yeah, but like killing Hitler, it's like yeah, everybody want to kill Hitler. Yeah, he delivered. Yeah. <laughs> he delivered. Yeah, um, but then the whole thing is like Sharon Tate. It's like. Is it disrespectful to say, well, she never died? And, like, maybe that's what he's saying. The spirit of Sharon Tate never oh, died. That God. kind of useful yeah. kind of thing. I see, this is the thing. If you want to put the film degree head on, then this is the shit you've got to go through. Like, is that what he's saying? That, you know, she, her spirit, that kind of uh, personality survived, but everything was still changed. You yeah. Know, because that's the thing with um, DiCaprio's character. Is that he is he's kind of old school and he's having trouble 
change, adjusting to how things are going and where they are going to go. You know, and that's why he has such a hard, that's why he's ending up on TV shows and he's having a hard time adjusting to that. Well, um, yeah, I mean, I just, I, I think, you know. Personally, I wouldn't fuck with any real life event like that. It would like be, no, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to make a film based around that. Yeah, yeah. Because well, it's too, it's too much. Like, I wouldn't even, not, no, I wouldn't make a film where somebody machine guns Hitler in the face. Yeah. Unless I was doing a parody, like a comedy film or something. And then that's questionable to make a comedy about Hitler. I mean, people have done it, but blah, 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 blah. Yeah. You know, yeah. you get people chasing after you and then you have to have Mel Brooks defend you. But it's like, I there are, there are some things which is like, I, I wouldn't go near that as a writer or whatever. I just tonally, I wouldn't go near it. Because like that is too much of a hot potato. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Absolutely. Well, Paul, um, that's that's brought us to um, to a, a perfect ending. Um, and um, I'm sure. I, look, I'm, next time we speak, I'm sure we'll be talking movies as we always do. But for now, for me and the listeners, thank you very much. I forgot about them. <laughs> <laughs> and there you go. We had a right old wander through movie and TVville, um, and obviously that is that's. When it when it's with somebody that you, that you know you've known for a long time, it's very it's very very different to um, the next interview, which is with um, Paul Waller. Where um, yeah, we we're, we're all over the map. We're all over the map. Um, not a lot to. I mean, again, there's there's no there's no real need for me to be ranting on in these um, uh, in these particular podcasts. It's a different it's a different kind of beast. Although no doubt there will be some rants when um, I watch something that I really wish I hadn't wasted my time on. Um, and there will be plenty of that, obviously. But in the meantime, um, I think we should just crack on straight into another interview. This is with another Paul, as stated at the top. Paul, Paul Waller, um, it, Twitter, Waller Not Weller. Um, he's on um, Different Times Podcast. Different Times Podcast is, you can find them on Instagram. Just find them on the podcast. It's a great podcast as well. Um, and uh, Paul is, Paul's great guy. He's an acid rain fan from back in the day. Who's interviewed me back in the day as well, apparently. Um, and um, uh, he was really keen to get on here, which is which is great. And because uh, I was really keen to get him on here as well. Um, so uh, and they just so happened to have a um, a, a bit of a cinema theme coming up in there on the on the new album, which I wasn't aware of. But there you go. Um, listen and. Um, Yes, uh, I hope you enjoy our chat. I really did. It was good fun. And um, here is my conversation with Paul Waller of Om, sorry, Ohms. He calls him both. Of Paul Waller of Ohms and the Different Times podcast. All right. All right, mate. How are you? I'm good. When you call me, a picture of your face from 1989 pops up. <laughs> into my phone and it always cracks me up you're jumping off a stage somewhere it's great that's um that's the benefit of time travel um right there uh you don't know you don't you, my you, device right now yeah well all, all, all my other friends well i say friends we're we're glorified acquaintances let's be honest um uh uh although i do think of you as a friend um <laughs> ah, yes! oh my oh fuck off <laughs> All, all my all my other friends get get a uh, a normal picture of the haggard old man that I, that I have become that uh, that's now talking to you. Uh, just every year I'll put one that comes younger and young, younger. Yeah, I don't know. Early H. I want boy H next. Uh, yeah. Well, uh, I tell you, there was t- there were times on um, there were times on uh, recording. Um, uh, um, oh shit! I've forgotten the name of the song. Fucking hell, that's not very good. Sense of Independence off our album. There was times when I was recording that where I was uh, definitely, uh, I definitely had to channel 1989 H uh, to get those words out. Well, yeah. Do you, you notice the difference between your voice on that new record to the last one? Uh, <laughs> well, yeah. It's it's so weird. You can tell the years in between it. Like it's it's crazy. It's something you probably don't notice because uh, I don't know. It's hard to listen to your own band as a fan, but it's weird. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm a, I'm a bit Lars Ulrich like that. I, I I mean, I listened to the whole album the other night, 
um, on headphones in bed. I mean, let's face it, there's a lockdown. I'm allowed, I'm allowed to do weird shit like that. Um, just just to keep reminding myself of, of, you know, what we've done, how far we've come and what a good job we've done. Because it's, um, you know, it, it, it's it's worth smelling the roses, especially at a time like this. Um, yeah, you're right. You know, it's, it's a good time to reflect on what you've done, not worry about the future, you know, and... Um, uh, We've, you know, we it took years to get the the lineup together. So to finally put an album out and for everybody to be as chuffed with it as they as they were, then you know we can only be happy about that. And uh, and yeah, my own performance, I'm over the moon with it. Um, you know, it's it's uh, obnoxious was recorded by a 19 year old boy, and um, you know the age of entitlement was recorded by a 48 year old man. <laughs> Not yeah. Love it. Yeah. So, you know, um, singer, better, you know, better singer, better songs, you know, better album if you ask me. But hey, there you go. Anyway, fucking hell. You're interviewing me again, you bastard. Sorry, I'll stop being touch camp. <laughs> oh, I, I don't think that's possible. Um, but, <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, so, let's, um, let, let's, get, let's get started early tours. Um, because, obviously, movie podcasts. Um, we've had a, we've had a little bit of music chats all about me. Fucking hell, let's make it about you. Um, obviously, you have specific genres that you're you're passionate about. Where do you think that? But where do you think that um, that passion started? You know, because uh, your your passion being horror was it? You saw horror and fell in love with cinema afterwards, or the other way round, or neither of those? Well. It's an interesting story and one I've never told before. Right? Well, I'm it's sorry, mad. we haven't got time for that. Um... Nah, <laughs> motherfucker. Like, I've been dying yeah. to, like, uh, to be asked this my whole life. Don't you, <laughs> don't you fucking dare, right? So, right. everyone, thanks for tuning in. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> um, great. Well, I'm, 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 and let's, 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 let's be completely honest about this. Um, like, we haven't prearranged this. I've just totally asked you that question because it's the first thing that came into my fucking head to be honest and it sounded quite good um there's a bit of iteration in there and so tell the story because yeah well it's a bit of a bummer right but it, it ends up in a good place so it's weird and uh, the reason i want to talk about this right now and uh, like and the manage management and sort of i know i manage the band but we've also got people that manage all sorts of other things at home state. And they were like, Paul, you've got to get on the podcast. You've got to talk about this uh, sort of stuff. I was like, right, okay. This is the perfect place to do it because it, the, the new Ohms album that's coming out in a month's time, it totally tallies with this whole thing about my love of movies. So right. when, I was, when I was younger, I had a really abusive dad. So it's, as I say, it starts off pretty downbeat. And um, it was a horrible family upbringing. And I think this happens with a lot of people in that same situation. You sort of run away from something. You're, you're trying to run away. And I've had counselling about it, and uh, she hit it on the head when she talked to me about it. It's like you will find a lot of those people that have been abused like, have this addictive personality that comes out of it because you're trying to cling to something to get away from like the everyday horror of what's going on at home. So what I really cling to uh, is a certain period of my youth when I found music. So I found uh, like thrash metal, I found Slayer, Acid Rain, Anthrax, stuff like that. And they were singing about horror. And that was when I first clicked into, okay, let's investigate. Right, like, right, uh, okay. So, and yeah, yeah. So that was it, running away. Right, so, so, so. Anthrax, obviously, Gateway Thrash Band, Acid Rain, Gateway Thrash Band. Uh, we had a song about Psycho on the first album. Um, I mean, yeah, Scott Ian writes about Stephen King stuff all the time. Yeah, um, yeah. I, I can definitely see where that. I can definitely see where that came. Out. Well, the first time I ever heard of uh, Misery, the movie, was um, was um, the Misery Anthrax Loves Company. Yeah, the Anthrax song off the shit album. Um, Motherfucker! Don't sta- start already. State of Euphoria. Oh, mate, I love it. Oh, dear me. State of fucking averageness. Dear me. Uh, that, that, that last song, that 13 thing, right, fair enough, been that. Everything else, keeper. Yeah, but, mate, to be honest, I've got Scott Ian on my side, so I win 2-0. Yeah, good point, yeah. <laughs> what do I know? 
always. I knew nothing. <laughs> yeah, true, true. Anyway, sorry, tangent. Um, so that, that, so yeah, so you've you've kind of you found it through just uh, escapism. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. Like my whole uh, addictive personality that sort of lasts on today. Like if I'm on tour, I will avoid drugs so so hard. It's just something that I know if I ever dabbled that I would get a taste for it and I'll be fucked, just forget it. So, like, I'm always, like, first to bed, I'll be the first one that will go and say, yeah, is there a spare room anywhere? And I'll just jump in that if we're staying over someone's house. Um, You know, I I will avoid any of that sort of hard partying just because I know what I'm like. And uh, it's been the same with movies. Like, I just had a little taste and that's been it my entire life. And the same with music, exactly the same thing, just running away finding something that you love and you can just sort of escape in. And that movies is perfect because it just takes you to a, a whole nother world. Yeah, I, I guess, I guess we all, I mean, anyone listening to this thing, we, you know, I think we all use movies for escapism um, and, 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 and going off and, you know, and, and escaping shitty situations. Um, but it's, uh, it sounds like you found a fairly potent cocktail that worked for you of, of horror movies and thrash metal. Yeah, yeah, and it, and it really did work. Uh, you know, school was fucking horrific. Home was horrific. Uh, we worked in, well, my mum and dad owned a fish and chip shop when we uh, first come to this country. And that meant I had until 10 p.m. where I was dad free. <laughs> so I could just, like, go upstairs, shut my door, watch movies and then hope that he would just stay downstairs when he finished work and was too knackered sort of thing. So it was it was a scary time but I had that thing. You know, you've just got to sometimes cling to something, which is like where as I say, where this passion stings from, uh, uh stems from, sorry. It's it's something that like if anyone's in that same uh, boat, they'll know exactly what I mean. If, if you and people do, they they fall into these things like self harming. They fall into things like drugs, as I say before, or you can fall into sort of less harmful things. And like, I, I think I lucked out so much by what I actually fell into. Yeah, yeah. I mean, well, that's that's it, it, that's quite amazing. And you know, thank you for your your openness. Um, and I and funnily enough, I did pick up on one thing: is is that um, just the nature of the conversation that we're having. And you referred, uh, and you referred to school being horrific and home being horrific. And I just thought it was quite apt that you use that particular word to to describe it, because obviously that goes hand in hand with how you managed to kind of escape that by disappearing into horror. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is weird. It's um, you know, at school you get those that, that handful of friends that you you just cling on to and like there you're out sort of thing and, and it's weird I was never bullied I was never like a cool kid but I was never like a, a someone that was bullied but the whole the whole essence of school really was a, a turn off for me I know I didn't want to learn I didn't want to muck about I remember even like it, they don't do it anymore I don't think like RE like religious studies whatever that is called now yeah. Or if it even exists, but I used to bring a flask of Chinzano <laughs> into class and just get smashed. Like I had a, <laughs> I had a really odd, like existence. Like pe- people, I guess, must have realised because it's not like vodka where you can't really smell it. It was, it was horrible to to know what I was potentially coming home to. But as I say, like there was there was a handful of friends that knew it and would have me over whenever they could. And there was uh, uh, many, many times where we just had record listening nights. And uh, there was many times when, like, they would come over mine and I knew I was in a safe place if I had my friends over. So I would always be inviting them over to, like, watch Hellraiser or watch, like, uh, any old shit that I could possibly get. And, like, I was proper lucky as well where I lived. Like, I mentioned uh, we worked in a fish and chip shop. So that wasn't always horrible. Like I could speak with my dad, and he uh, employed me to to make the chips for this place. Uh, so one barrel of chips meant one uh, ten pound note, which meant one 
DVD or sorry video that I could buy uh, yeah. back then, uh, or I could go to the record shop and buy an album. And these record shops, video shops, uh, and a cinema was less than like thirty seconds walk from my house. The whole thing. So I I had access to just every single thing that I could want as a kid, including money, which all my friends didn't have. Right. Okay. So. Yeah, it's that old. It's that old story of you, you had access to money and you were able to fund all this, and everyone was jealous of all the stuff you had. But you'd have swapped all of that for the kind of home life that they had. Oh man, uh, within within a heartbeat, yeah. There was, there, I mean, it, and this is what the album is about. Just to swap it back to the music, it was like, a, like, how do you get by it? And I think the only way that I actually recovered from, like, uh, I don't know, like that constantly thinking about it in a negative way was actually doing that counselling. The actual way that you would feel when you actually talk about something, uh, once it came out, I blubbed and blubbed and blubbed, but it was such a fucking release to actually say it to someone that wasn't my wife. Uh, and since then, I haven't been able to shut up about it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, it it's I know, like yeah. someone let off that valve and, and it's, it's, Something that I'm, I just. Uh, we've 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 all been there, mate. We've all been through. Yeah. We've all been through counselling. That's that's, you know, helped us realise things and made us realise things. And um and um and yeah, there is a period of time there where you're not an open wound, but you you know you are kind of, uh, very sensitive and all of a sudden very open about something that you've only just discovered yourself. But there's also that feeling that. You want to tell people and you want to share it because it's 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 just it's kind of like no 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 you need to hear this because like this is this is this is me you know that guy you know this is like this has had a big effect and you know it's this is who I am now as it were. Oh, hundred percent. And like the only time that I will ball my eyes out watching films is if it's parent related. Yeah. I just the end of Forrest Gump. Forget about it. Like I'm out of here. I'm, I'm just like I can't. I can't look at anybody. I'm I've never. Just like a I've, 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 I've never seen Forrest Gump. What's wrong with you? I, I know, <laughs> and, and I'm so, and I'm sorry. And people will be re- listening to this and going like, you know, oh, this conversation was going somewhere really interesting. And then he t- and then he said, <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've never seen Forrest Gump, and they went off on a tangent. <laughs> so so uh-huh. so don't let me ruin this, but please, um, but. Yeah, I, I I get what you mean because um, scenes 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 of um, people losing their fathers in films is very difficult for me because I lost my dad. I mean, it was thirteen years ago, but you know, it's still it, it's still there. And when something triggers it, it's you know, it's like yesterday. Um, so I absolutely get what you mean. Yeah, it's a it's a it's a tough thing to to examine because you've got to look into yourself and it's always, that's never a pleasant thing. Uh, it's, it's something that nobody really wants to enjoy, uh, you know, delving into yourself. But once you've done it uh, and like you, you come up with all sorts of hypotheses when you're out of that and like you try and sum it up uh, and for some people it's really successful right? and I think it was for me. Um, it's just, I just think it's very cathartic to to get it out there, which is why. Oh yeah, I bet like, I bet I, your I, wife has noticed a difference. I think everybody has. Like, I'm still, I still hate people. Don't yeah. get me wrong. Oh god, like, yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm at a show, and at the end of the show, you get like you will just get people that uh, gravitate towards a singer for some crazy reason. When like I I thank <laughs> every, everything. Uh, that they let me sing for them because I, I, I think they're so much better musicians than I am. But there will always pe- be people coming up to me, and I'm always like, before I get talking to them, which is fine when it starts, but I just want them to die. <laughs> I want me to die. I don't want any anything to do with anybody. Like over the phone, fine, but like in that sort of situation, I'm I'm still not good. I don't like people until I actually have to suffer people, and then I'm cool with it. But I don't know where this is going, but I like what I'm saying. <laughs> Be aware. Don't come up to me at a concert. Yeah. I'm not going to enjoy it. Uh, but, yeah, where am I going with that? Uh, well, uh, look, I, I, first of all, I mean, um, I think 
I think it's quite interesting there that you said about um, how you, um, um, you 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 hate people for that second, and then but you start and then you start talking and everything's all right, and it's like it's weird that because you know everything's going to be all right, but you still can't get over that initial feeling of oh, I wish they'd fuck off. Yeah, absolutely. And you know what? It probably does stem from like the, the, your, your, my youth. It's one of those things where you don't trust anyone. You don't like anyone. If you start off with that attitude, you're not going to be disappointed with that person. Yeah. Um, yeah. That, and that, and yeah that, that you don't need to see a, a psychoanalyst to figure that out. Uh, it's just one of those things that... Um, and you can tell people like it as well, because they'll be the ones who are at a gathering, at a party... They just want to be sat on their own, quite happy in their own, and and that's me, man. That's me at, at home watching Blu-rays of all my favourite horror films, rather than going across the road to the pub with my mates. I'd m- much rather that because I might meet people that I don't know, and I'd rather not. Fair enough. I, I, <laughs> thank, yes. thank, thanks for taking the call. Uh, <laughs> you miserable cunt. Yeah. Isn't everyone like that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm sure everyone's like that. I'm sure everybody hates company. (laughs) Um, Well, look, I think I think um, I think everybody is definitely um, uh, got a little window in there as to uh, why you you like movies and, and, you know, where that passion comes from. Um, But but just to just to pick you up um, on not answering the fucking question. um, (laughs) Was what came first? Was it? Did you discover horror and through it cinema, or did you discover movies and then horror? Oh, I know. Well, no, sorry, I do apologise. You did say it was thrash metal. It was thrash metal. That was the first thing. But if you want to go before that, there was there was something when I was a little kid growing up, um, and, and this was in Australia, so I was a little kid. Um, we, we're talking between five and seven, that sort of age. Um, on the telly, there was a couple of like Michael Caine films. Uh, one was called The Hand. Uh, I think Oliver Stone directed that, but I've not ever come back to it. And then one was called The Swarm. Uh, and these were both on telly. And I yeah. remember being flipping terrified as a child uh, of certain scenes. And there was another one that scared the shit out of me, which was a Clint Eastwood one. And we're talking proper old. It was a called Plain Misty for me, which is more like a thriller, but I would still count that as horror because it's about stalking and stuff like that. And th- those three films like really had this effect on me, so I, I knew that if I closed my eyes, that that's where I was going to be thinking. I was going to be thinking this creepy hand or this swarm of bees or this stalker with a knife. And, uh, and I was not turned off by it. I liked that feeling of being scared. Right. Yeah. I did like that. But I tell you what one really, as a kid, like I knew that I was going to be, I was going to be in love with this forever. And it wasn't a horror film. It's a uh, Close Encounters of the Third Kind. The first right. time I saw it, uh, there was that scene, which is complete horror, when all the toys start moving on their own. Oh, I just, uh, I just instantly thought you meant when the, um, the, the, the boobs morph. Into oh no, that's the director's cut, isn't it? <laughs> that's your director's. No, cut. there there is a director's cut where yeah, or it might never have what? happened. I might be completely misremembering that. I do apologise, but there is a story there somewhere of yeah, Richard Dreyfus is lying in bed at night and he looks at her, he looks at his wife's boobs and they morph into like you know lights. Wow, I have not seen that. Right, well, I, I maybe I haven't either, and I've just heard the rumour. But there you go. Um, that's from that that that's got to be from probably an interview from years ago with Richard Dreyfus, I think. And that's I don't know what, I don't know how that's popped into my head, but um, I seem to have a, an ability to recall weird stuff like that. Well, okay, so you obviously know this film. Did you when you first saw it? Did it take you away? Did did you? Why I know to flip the interview to you, but what it did to me no, was it, uh, it, it it took me somewhere else. Like there there is all this possibility out there. Um, and it was the first time I ever thought that out, outside of my like home where I lived. It, oh, that's what right, film okay. can do. It sort of took me like there is a life out there. Um, like the, the way he ran away from his family, um, 
it, it sort of enchanted me uh, in, a, in a way as well, yeah. which I know when you watch it as an adult, you think, what a cunt. <laughs> but, but as a kid watching that, you just think, wow, he's going to go on this adventure. You don't care that his family's ruined behind it. Um, uh, yeah, right. That, that was the film that really uh, got me invested. And as I say, when I bought a, when I got a video player, uh, I think it was uh, in England in about eight, Christmas 87, it would have been. That's that's when everything changed because, as I say, I had access to everything. And we advertised in this movie house. Um, they call them cinemas. Uh, so we advertised in there, and it meant I had free tickets. Whenever I wanted, I could just go and watch a movie. So I had it so good in so many ways. And, yeah, yeah I, just, like, I just completely engrossed myself in it. So... Um... Then obviously, you know, you, you you delve into that world and 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 on all the rest of it. Now let's let's um, let's just assume that people listening to this are um, are you know not as uh, uh, well attuned to horror as you are. Um, right. Would you be able to make some recommendations and say you know for and also from various parts of the genre or something like that, you know, or you know, um, but but before we before we do that, just one question, one simple direct question, um, and I think I know the answer, but let me just check. Um, sure. So, Rob Zombie, uh, shit musician, shit filmmaker, or um, or not? Terrible musician. We uh, we have a we 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 have an accord. Uh, and I didn't even like uh, White Zombie. Uh, I didn't like that at all. Lo- you're ticking a lot of boxes here, mate. Uh, but films, I would say fifty percent awesome, fifty percent trash. Fair enough. My figure's slightly different, 100% trash. Um, but, you know, never mind. At least he's uh, at least he's trying. Um, and his, obviously, life's goal is not to necessarily um, please me. Um, but, um, OK, so I'm glad... was just to, to please his missus, to put her in every film. Well, I, you know, I, yeah, I just don't get him. Um, uh, and oh, the, only, the only decent thing I've ever seen him do was be interviewed about Slayer. And he and he just and it was really cool. He just said, um, he said, man, once you get into Slayer, it's for life, you know. I've never, you know, um, I've never seen a kid being a Slayer for one summer. I've never met that guy. <laughs> <laughs> man, fair, fair, fair enough. He's not lying. Do you know what I mean? And I just thought, you know what? I, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm actually that's good. Finally, you've done something that I like. Um, that's a good point. Who goes back on Slayer? Yeah, exactly. You don't go. Oh yeah, I was into Slayer. Yeah. Not anymore. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I listened to I listened I listened to Rain in Blood the other day, and it's dated really badly. It's shit, isn't it? No, no. As as no one ever said. Um, yeah, but um. That was time. So um, uh, moving moving onwards. Uh, yeah, horror films that you would recommend. Right. Well, I tell you the ones that I would recommend that sort of made me a lifer. Can I can I just say uh, can I just say at this stage yeah. I bet you've got a list haven't you? I I have some notes. <laughs> I fucking knew it. I knew it. Uh, Bloody cheat! Oh. You'll get in detention after this. Dude, <laughs> you've dude. got you've got to do an, you've got to do another hour. <laughs> Look, you should have some notes too. You're a professional. <laughs> oh, fuck you. Um, I'm I'm not a professional. I'm not a journalist. You know, like I said. Um, that, and, and that probably helps because it means that like, I've said it before. I'll say it again. I can sing, I can shout, um, and I can you know speak in public. So basically, we'll talk for food, um, and so yeah, I just go to a conversation. So not having any journalistic uh, training helps me um, because it's not question and answer, question and answer. With you know, long form interviewing, it's more like a job interview, which is stuff I have done before, like interviewing people for, for employment. And um, it becomes about you ask one question and then while they're answering it, you uh, you then ask a question about the answer and then you ask a question about the answer. And then you and, and that, you know, the deeper down the rabbit hole you go. I had a session easy with Bob Geldof uh, once. Oh, fucking I, hell. Dear me. I, Right, so I was interviewing him, uh, and I was desperate to to guide this question into a, where I wanted him to answer, and he was desperate not to do it. 
And there was this battle going on, and I was never going to win against Bob Geldof. No. I kept trying. I just wanted to ask a question about Live Aid. That's all I wanted. And uh, no, he, he saw through me and annihilated me uh, uh, over the phone. So yeah, sometimes, like, you're right, it's best just to have a conversation. But like, if I just, if you want something and someone doesn't want to give it, it's, it's tricky. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree. Anyway, Jesus, let's get these movies out. People must be fucking right. pulling their hair out. Well, no, mate, it's a Bob Geldof story. They're always good. True, all, all, true, <laughs> true. You, you, always good. You, you, dro- right. you dropped a bomb, bro. <laughs> thanks, thanks. Oh, I can tick that off my spreadsheet. Done, Bob Geldof tick. Yeah. Right, okay, so. Uh, these, this is what got me into it, right? This is my, my sort of... Um, my Grail, okay? I think there's six movies here, and people would have seen the majority of them. Uh, so you've got to start with Alien. This was probably, you know, like, you know, I mentioned before when we had a conversation uh, on your podcast about, like, this batch of records that I got, my initial batch. Uh, well, I also did a, a similar thing within a, in a two month period uh, when I started getting paid for doing these uh, buckets of chips. I got this, these films, and like the first one was Alien, second one was Hellraiser, and then Nightmare on Elm Street. So I got wow. these three together. Uh, just, and... just legendary, iconic movies, every one of them. Yeah, that I'd not seen because I was nowhere near eighteen. So it was, it was uh, something that was people, my friends would talk about them. You would love that, and yeah, I did. I, I bloody got them, and it was life changing. Uh, my next batch wasn't so good, but it, it also, I love watching shit. I love watching horror shit. The shit of the horror film, I still get something out of it. I don't know why. Uh, and the next one was a film called Video Dead. And I, this was, I'm pr- I haven't put the date down, but I think it was 87 it came out. And it you, didn't put the date, my... you didn't put the date down? I'm afraid I didn't. Right, okay. So I'm just, just trying to see how committed to these notes you were. <laughs> I did mention it though. Uh, yeah, it's check date, but I didn't. So I'm going to say 87. Sorry okay, if cool. I'm wrong. But uh, in this film, it's a zombie flick. Uh, it must have cost maybe 10 grand or something like that. Uh, uh, very, very cheap. And it was something that led me down a path of don't have these high expectations. You can still get stuff. Um, out of anything as long as the director is uh, committed and wants to be um, get every bang for his buck and isn't just treading water, just like a musician. If the director has a vision and wants to actually pull it off, there are ways around. And Video Dead is, is spot on uh, to show you this. Now, you can't get this anywhere. I think it costs a, a lot of money, but you cannot illegally stream it if you're that way inclined. Um, but yeah, like there's so many companies now that are sort of like um, putting out and uh, getting decent prints of these old films. And I, I, Video Dead is one I wish would come soon. Um, but yeah, there's a Video Dead. Another one that was like a lot bigger budget uh, was called House. Oh but, yeah, I remember House. And well, that's a, that. It, is it a trilogy in the end, or did it went up past? Yeah, three? yeah. I think it was like four of them, maybe. I, well, I went to I went to see the first House at the cinema. Wow! Oh man, I would have loved that. Yeah, I remember it being really good. Oh, there, it, there is. It was my first horror comedy, and like, although I don't laugh at comedies, like, there's nothing in my body that will make me laugh at anything except I think I sort of did a wry smile uh, at Spinal Tap <laughs> so, uh, and you know that comic strip Bad News yeah you know that that's the sort of thing oh, yeah. that will make me smile when it's something to do with something I love and they've taken the tip out of it in a loving way Yeah. so that sort of will make me smile but I rarely laugh I'm, it really takes something to, to make me belly laugh but like I smile all over house like, I, I love it um, and the last one was The the Omen which is like oh, another classic oh my god still to this day um, fucking terrifying um, and um, and the young lad who played Damien uh, received a birthday card on his birthday every day uh, sorry every year until the year Gregory Peck died 
Oh, wow. You used to send him a birthday card every year. That's something nice. Again, <laughs> yeah, again, again, nice again, my head is full of shit. These things oh, just good. fall out. Right, a few a few days ago, um, going through lockdown misery, my wife said to me... <laughs> going through lockdown days. misery, or as I like to call it, my marriage. Yeah, my, my marriage. My, my wife <laughs> said to me, Paul, um, sit down. I'm like, oh God, here we go. Yeah. And she gave me the remote and said, I've just bought you Shudder. And Shudder is like Netflix, but for horror fans. Oh, right. So I was like, oh, this is amazing. And on it, they've got this uh, series that uh, investigates, uh, the, like, film curses. Sort oh, of. Poltergeist and, or, and fucking The Crow and shit like that. Exactly right, yeah. It's called Cursed Films, and they've got one for the <laughs> only... Oh, they, they've really pointed the way with the title, haven't they? <laughs> you're not going to mistake it. I think it is only... <laughs> Cursed, <laughs> fil- Cursed Films. Oh, I wonder what this is about. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's, there's six of them, and I'll tell you the, the worst from these I'm going to spoil it but I'm sure if you know about it or you know about it there's uh, a great uh, I don't know what they're called what's it called when you get loads of films in one film like an anthology film um, maybe no, not what, what, within a film yeah so you've got like five segments in one film oh right before. yeah no, um, like ter- m- movie terms like that uh, I'm afraid I can't help Let's call it an anthology film, and I might be right. All right. Uh, so there's, there's one of them, and it's The Twilight Zone. And, uh, oh, yeah, Steven yeah. Spielberg had his hand Yes, in that well. yeah, 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 yeah. I went to the cinema to see that as well. So fucking hell, man. That would have been amazing. But it was, it was my, uh, it's my era, and I'm, uh, I'm a little bit older than you. How old are you? I am. <laughs> easy. I'm 44, coming up 45. Oh, <laughs> So you're 44 and three quarters. Is that what you're trying to fucking Mate, tell me? In September, September is, is going to be the horrific 45. Oh, horrific. I've just turned 50, you cheeky cum. Um, <laughs> uh, way to go. Um, so, basically, I've got five years on you. So, uh, the the this this entry-level stuff, because, of course, the internet you know, still wasn't uh, around at this point. So, the entry-level stuff that you're getting is the hand-me-downs from, like, other generations, and it's the stuff that's easy to get hold of, because that wasn't easy to get hold of when it was out initially. So you're, you know, I, you've, I you've imagine, got... Yeah. So, so So you go in, like, you know, Alien and, um, uh, um, you know, Freddy um, and whatever the other one, the movie was, House. Hellraiser, Hellraiser. And, 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 oh, yeah, sorry, Hellraiser as well, yeah. Um, you see, though, a lot of those movies, I, you know, they... As they came out, we were, you know, we were all over it. And I was five years older than you. So, as you said, you weren't old enough to see them. So that's the difference explained there. But it's just, yeah, it's just unfortunate timing on your part or fortunate timing on my part, whatever. Well, they, yeah, I mean, they're, they're my movie, my pillars, like yeah. everything else, uh, like, is supported by them. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, where was the, I? The, 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 one of the, twi- the one of the Twilight Zone that I always remember is, oh, the, yeah. is the gremlin out on the wing. Yeah. Oh, that's it. But it's just, I don't know, it's just fucking, it's not like, it's not like a cuddly gremlin and gremlins 2 gremlin. It's just like, it, no, no, this fucker wants to kill everybody on this plane. <laughs> I, I can't it's an imagine evil what bastard. I would have been like in a cinema. Dude, it would oh, have been yeah. insane. Oh, really good, really good. Um, but, um, I mean, and, and again, you know, just uh, uh, from that era, um, you know, really, really iconic films. Um, so, how are you with stuff like um, other stuff that would be would be coming out now, or maybe a little bit later on? So, when like you know, Terminator Two starts coming out and shit like that, um, you know, were you were you old enough to go and see that? Yeah, so that was one of the uh, the, uh, the, the staples that like all yeah. of us would go and see. So, when I say all of us, it was all my metalhead friends, uh, probably a clique of six kids. But, you know, the, within it, you've always got, like, a, a couple that will go together to something yeah. where that everyone will get together. I remember another one that we all got together was um, Interview with a Vampire. Uh, for some reason, we all got together. And I think I, it's because another Guns N' Roses song was on that one. Well, either that or you were trying to impress some girls. <laughs> Easy. <laughs> and this, is, this is all lads thinking, like, horror was the best thing in the world. 
and then you uh, and, and then you went and spent a few hours with uh, Tom Cruise and Brad Pitt dressed up like a couple of quaffered gents. Brad Pitt looks absolutely stunning in that film. It's unbelievable. He looks fucking stunning in all his films. Even in, like, <laughs> Fight Club, when he's rough as fuck and had the shit beaten out of it, and he still looks better than I'll ever look. You know? But, hey, anyway. Uh, well, yeah. <laughs> it takes all sorts, doesn't it? It takes, takes, all, it takes sorts. all sorts. It does, mate. It does. Um, and it's funny you said that you also picked up the... Obviously, comedy's not a, not, not a genre for you. Um, which I which I get. I mean, as as a as a comedian myself, I find the horror genre, sorry, the um, the comedy genre, um, probably the weakest of, of of any genre because it's kind of, it's the hardest thing to do really, um, and invariably um, the kind of modern comedies that we get that sounds that makes me sound every one of my fifty years, but currently we are getting a lot of hundred minute. Um, or you know, or yeah, sort of hundred minute, even more sometimes, comedies that are really funny. You know, they ease you in, then you you get a lot of laughs, and then you get literally about forty five minutes of um, um, a developing a um, romantic interest, and then developing the story, and and then and it and then like about. 15 minutes before the end, you get a few more jokes and they call it a comedy movie. Um, but it's all down to the editing, though. Surely it's a comedy. It's not particularly down to the director. If those beats it, are off, you're no, fucked. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not... I, I think, ultimately, it's everything, isn't it? It's, can the actors do comedy? What's their comedy timing like? What's the director's comedy timing like? Are they all working? Is there a vibe? Um, because if, 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 none of, if none of that happens on set... You're not going to create it anywhere. You know, if it's not on set, then it's not going to be in the edit. Um, and that, you know, it very much relies on, you know, the really good chemistry and people being able to do comedy and people having comic timing. Um, and um, it's amazing how many comedians you see getting loads of acting roles. Um you know, with, with the explosion in streaming TV and Netflix and Amazon, and there being so many companies wanting to make so many things, you know, never have so many comedians had so many offers from so many movie companies. Um, Is that, well, I think some of them are, are working. Like, I do remember, like, my podcast buddy, Daniel, he was... Ah, do you mean um, Danny Different? Danny Different, yeah, that fucker. So I, he is well into his half-hour American sitcom. Uh, any film from 1990 onward is game. Uh, and sometimes going around his house can be a slog. And he'll put them on as backgrounds, like Aye. other people might put music on. No, 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 sorry, can't do that. Not having that. No? Not having that. No, you can't. You, mental. You, you, you don't put a move. That That is literally... Like, um, but do you know what that's like? That's like cooking a full roast dinner and putting it on the on the table when you have guests around. And just saying, oh, it's just, yeah, it's just 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 pick at that, you know, just some snack in the background, a bit some snacks in the background. It's like no, it's a whole fucking roast dinner. So you either sit down and you eat the roast dinner, or you fuck off. Do you know what you I mean? Tell that you're a comedian, would you? <laughs> I that, that's got well, you. Well, th- thank you, thank you, for, thank you very much, mate. But if I was, you'd have laughed instead of ha- casually observing that I am a comedian. <laughs> so I failed. Wait, no, it's so true though. Who does that? Who puts on comedy? Fuck, in Daniel, the Daniel, that's who fucking does that. <laughs> hey, how, how can you just nip in and out of a movie, in and out of scenes, while you're talking to somebody else about their fucking commute? <laughs> <laughs> That's just like I tell you what I tell you what he's never getting on here. Not if he's a movie in the background kind of guy. I'm not having you know. No, sorry, movie in the foreground. You in the background. He uh, to be honest, like he's just this whole lockdown. It's been video games and music. So yeah, right. I think uh, I think he's this has changed him. He's never not worked before, uh, and it's a it's a real strange one. Uh, he is. <laughs> He's gone mental. He, he, I talked to him earlier today, and he's dying, dying to get back to work, and terrified to get back to work. Bizarre, 
Like he's breaking down in front of me. Um, and probably like a lot of listeners as well, I would imagine. Um, you know, but um, I tell you what, this is this is quite fascinating right now because basically. I started off interviewing me, then you started interviewing me, then I started interviewing you, and now we're both talking about somebody, somebody else. <laughs> yeah, let, let's stop talking about him. He gets enough love. Um, he gets all the emails for our show. I don't get nothing. That's try, That's because he's trying to protect you and your uh, paper-thin ego from the abuse. <laughs> I know. I know. From from Let's reality, talk about horror movies. He always he prompt. If I don't message about the podcast occasionally, he prompts me. Says, "God, go, say something nice about the podcast." You know, it's, um, make it make it look like we've got more than one fan. I, do you know what? I believe you. <laughs> <laughs> ah, well, that's where that's where I win because <laughs> I was lying. Um, so um, you're a big uh, you're a big horror. We do, so we don't do comedy. You're a big horror fan. Um, yeah. um, you know action gangster movies you know the classics Scorsese's and and you know oh do you like Avatar and all that shit where do you stand on um you know that that homogenous fucking lack of question it's, it's a, a weird one with other uh, uh, get, correct me is it genres or genres <laughs> well I well <laughs> this is a classic this is a classic fucking uh Paul Waller moment Neither. <laughs> Neither. Like hey? Daniel again. But no, no, sorry, sorry. What do you say? What do you say? Z- yes. Z- no, that's right. Yeah, genres. Yes. <sighs> Thank goodness. Right. So it, well, like, look, 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 that's. Genres. But that, I'm, I'm, I'm not saying that that's. I'm not saying that's correct. And we could really make this an interesting podcast. And I could fucking smack out uh, Google, and we'll find out what the correct pronunciation is. But. Um, I'm, yeah, it might be, it might not be, but let's just go with genres, shall we? Okay, I'm going to have to say uh, that although I, I pretty much do keep up with everything, right? I try not to miss anything that might be a talking point in film. The the only other genre that I'm well bang into is World War Two stuff. Ah, I right. I thought is. I thought you were going to say porn. No, definitely not porn. Well, I couldn't have been definitely more wrong, not. could I? Really? <laughs> no, no, definitely not. Uh, so, you mean? Do you mean? Do you mean like Guns of the Navarone, um, or do you mean like you know, or, or do you mean like documented stuff, uh, or do you mean both? Uh, the whole lot, the whole shebang. Cool. Like, I, Fascinated my, by the my war. Yeah. My favourite film isn't a horror. It's Schindler's List, which is sort of a horror. Uh, oh, have you have you ever seen a movie called Stalag Seventeen? No. Right. Um, it's black and white. It's set in a prisoner of war camp. Um, it's a movie that was very po- was very highly regarded and successful at the time, but it's never really. But it's not one that that sort of stuck in. It, it, you know, that stuck and you know continued to get acclaim for years gone. So it's, it's so it's basically it's a little forgotten, but uh, it's black and white. Stalag Seventeen. Um, it's a really, I I really enjoyed it. I remember, I remember being um, being up late at night, and my mum and dad were going to go to bed, and they said, "Oh, what are you going to do? Are you going to bed?" And I said, "No, I'm gonna I'm gonna watch a film." And they said, "Oh, what?" I said, "Stalag 17." And I remember my mum, uh, my mum just going, "Oh, you'll enjoy that." This is interesting. Uh, I've just looked it up. Yeah. 1953. Yeah. So my cut off with films is 57. Well, I've got to be honest. I, I'm, I, yeah, I'm, I'm really not into black and white. I, I mean, new black and white movies, which is ridiculous, but yes. But yeah, I, I'm not into black and white comedy or any of that. My, you know, I, I was born in the seventies, and that's like I'm, I'm, I'm moving, I'm moving onwards. So um, you go back further than I do. It's just a, a one-off in yeah. my catalogue. All right. Well, I've ticked it. I've given it. I've put it in my watch list. Oh, you... well, you've ticked it. You've ticked yeah, it. I've ticked it mate. Oh well, well. You know, it's been worth. If this has all been worthwhile, I tell you what I would say to your listeners, uh, if I may be so uh, presumptuous and bold. Take it, um, take take over, Radio Paul, coming at you live. There is a website out there on the website land, and it's called Letterbox D. Uh, so the word letterbox, all one word, and the le- the letter D at the end. So a letterbox. <laughs> And uh, basically, it allows you to, every time you watch a film, all you've got to do is type in that film's name, 
uh, it'll find it and you tick watch, you give it a score, you can re- review it if you want, but it just keeps a log of when you've watched a film and what you've watched. And it also lets you uh, create playlists and watch lists that you want to, to do. It's all free. Uh, so it's a great tool. What, completely um, completely free to watch movies through? No, you can't watch movies right. through it. Right, okay, yeah. It's just for you to log it. The nerd that wants to make a list. Ah, is, okay. Is Okay, got you. Got you. Uh, I'm on there as Waller, not Weller, and like by all means, please follow me. Uh, I am great to talk to over the internet, just not face to face. It's a simple rule. Um, so yeah, like I would recommend that you go to that and have a look at my recent watches. What I've been doing this lockdown, and what I plan to do is watch two movies a day because. Uh, Oh, that's just what I'm doing and so far I'm averaging two and a bit and I just want to at the end of this maybe do uh, a podcast similar to yours maybe nicking your idea maybe I don't know but I just want to be able to uh, what was the word uh, to create something about what I've done over this this time period so I'm just logging every single thing I've watched and and I'm in love with this website H I'm absolutely loving just every day going on it seeing what other people have watched i'm losing my mind well, it's, it, well it sounds like you've um sounds like you've actually uh, found a, a very useful tool to get you through the lockdown it, it's something else i've found so many films that are similar to you know like you get on spotify you'll get if you like this band you might also like this band they, they do it with movies. It, there's everything on there that you would want. And as I say, all you've got to do is put your name in there, put an email address in there, and then it's free of charge unless you want to um, uh, give them money. So you don't have to. Um, but, yeah, absolutely love that. Um, and, yeah, well or not well, that's me on there. So if you want to chat, please come over and, and chat with me on it. Including you, H, I'd love to see what you're watching. You can spy on people, and like, you can see that they've watched... Uh, for instance, a new Star Wars or whatever, and you can have a row with them about it on there. It's good fun. I'll tell you what, mate, your publicist is going to be furious with you. She's going to say, you spent about five minutes on our album, and then this fucking letterboxd.com, you sounded like a fucking salesman for 15 minutes. (laughs) Get your fucking act together. (laughs) All right. (laughs) <laughs> Love. But yeah, there we go. So yeah, that's what I've been really digging myself into, man. I no, mean, that, that's cool. Fantastic. That's cool. That's cool. I think, um, yeah, I, I know a few people will be interested in that who it, um, who may already be on there and may already even be following you. Well, we like keep it coming. I, I be, before anything else, right? Because this is the one question I actually wrote down to ask you. Oops. Yeah. Uh, now I don't. I know that is this is going to be like a, a long project for you. So I don't want to spoil too much, but I hope I'm not. But I just want to know, because everyone knows inside, what what your favourite horror film is. Oh, right, OK. Um, yeah, oh, God, I mean, I don't think I have one. Um, but I... Well, I'm I'm very I'm very very um, reluctant with like, oh, what's your favourite movie? What's your favourite song? What's your favourite mm-hmm. band? Mm-hmm. What's your... Because if I'd say one and then I'd think, oh, but then there's that, and then I'd say that and say, oh, but then there's that, uh, and and I think with these things, something either springs to mind immediately, or you haven't got one, and nothing springs to mind immediately, and then when something does spring to mind, I think, well. I haven't, just, I, you know, I haven't watched that for about five years. So how could that be my fucking favourite? You know what I mean? Um, but to give you a, a hodgepodge of, um, and some of these you might not even consider horror as well. Um, oh, I, I'm absolutely full of shit. I'm absolutely full of shit. Forget everything I just said. My apologies to you. My apologies to everyone listening. The Mist. <laughs> Wow, that's a good pick. I, I, do you know what? I just feel like I just feel like I've pulled my I've pulled my flies down and revealed a mightily impressive python. <laughs> do you know what I mean? That's one of those that's going to clang on the scales. That has been like, oh yeah, he's 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 pulled out a big one there. He's pulled out the big guns. That film. Have you seen it in black and white? Uh, I think I have. 
I might not have done, you know. I might not have done. Um, I I couldn't find it on black and white, so I had to do an illegal stream of it in black and white. Oh, I think I, uh, I no, I've got the I've got the Blu-ray, so it's it, so it'll be on well, there. Yes, yeah, there is a black. Oh. Right? Do you know what? Yeah, so do you know what? It's early enough. It's locked down. Guess what I'm doing tonight? <laughs> Dude, I'm going out for I'm going out for a walk. It, it, um, it, you think that's like your best film of all time? How can you make it better? Black and white, and I can't uh, say that about any other <laughs> film. Oh, say yeah, just easy. Have you seen um, uh, Mad Max Fury Road in the the black and chrome edition? No. Have you seen the normal edition? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fucking great movie. I mean, Again, I mean, literally. Like yeah, I mean, it, there's it's literally impossible not to mention spoilers because the plot is <laughs> the plot line is so short. <laughs> I mean, it's just ridiculous, but. Um, uh, yeah, I, I loved it, but the black and chrome version is um, is phenomenal, and that and you, and you will and you can find that. I'll tell you, but that's the thing with Mad Max. As soon as you put a storyline in there, you get beyond Thunderdome, and no one wants that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, nobody wants Tina Turner in a movie. Full stop. Never mind a Mad Max movie. Do you know what I mean? All right. All right, Jesus. Well, you know, I don't know. I just yeah. <laughs> That was like, you know, the when Mad Max came out, that was another one of my like, oh, yeah, fucking gateway drug into, you know, post-apocalypse movies. Probably the first post-apocalypse movie I ever saw. Mad Max 2 was probably the second post-apocalypse movie I ever saw. And then you saw Mad, and then you saw, you know, Mad Max 3 Beyond Thunderdome and you just went, oh, fucking hell, what a car crash. Do you know, as a kid, I loved them all, man. Like, I wouldn't be able to choose between them. But it is something that you learn as you grow along in life is when you, you learn the difference between like a hack film and a film. It is weird. And, and there's, yeah. uh, there's nothing that I could do that would be able to describe it. It's just something that you learn, that you pick up on what works for you and what doesn't. Like is nothing to do with it. It's the actual process of the filmmaking. I, t- I can swing this back to Holmes. Here we go, publicist. Right, okay. So we feel- So anyway, that was Paul from <laughs> Oms there. <laughs> you fuck up. Oh, try it so hard. Right, okay. Go yeah. on, mate, go on. Like, Fill your boots, like- shoot your load. <laughs> I know what you're going to do. You're going to go, so that was boring. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not. That is, no, no, it was, it was funny once. Well, I, I'm not going to do it again, I promise. Go for it. All right, okay. So we, as a band, film videos, right? And they're always, like just a a shitty video but there was one video that we filmed where a director approached us and this is a director um that just loved our music and when i looked him up i saw all the bands that he'd worked with and these were massive bands and i was like wow he likes our music which is great and then he invited me along to do a video at sort of a a crazy mates right rate prices to this place uh i think it's somewhere next to bitch in london just some I basically got there, I got in a lift, and he, he met me outside, and he said, uh, Angelina Jolie was in this lift last week. And I was like, oh, bloody hell, okay. So we went upstairs, uh, got up in this lift, and um, up a little flight of stairs, and then go outside, then you go inside. And then all of a sudden, you are in this place that you would just never believe. There was one side of it is... Um, seamstresses and, and, and dressmakers and all this sort of thing. The other side is filmmakers uh, in this one warehouse. It's really strange. And he led me right to the back to his little studio. And it was a world of difference to what a professional guy has to what... And this guy's called Craig Murray. Sorry, I didn't mention his name. Um, uh, and when I walked in there, the lenses that, that he had, just to shoot my face, uh, you can see this video. Fucking hell, what was it called? It was Shambles. That's the song. Uh, it's go on YouTube, type Ohm's Shambles, and it'll come up. And you'll see the difference between that video and all sorts of other videos that we put out, which is just done on a regular struggling band budget. That's awesome. He was, he was doing things with the lens that I've never seen before. So he would have a lens uh, on the camera, but then he would hand hold another lens and put it in front of his camera's lens and just flick it with his hand every now and again to make this sort of weird wave thing go on. And all these little tricks, and I just thought to myself, this guy is so pro. He's 
so clever at what he does. And when we got it back, we were just like, there's nothing else we can say to do to that. We don't need any other mix done. We don't need, it's just perfect. Thank you very much. And it's one of those things that made you realise, ah, there is so much work in that. I was there from the beginning of the day to maybe eight, nine at the evening and got for a four minute song and it's just my face. It, it was a slog. So it really put me into like what you have to go through to 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 create and like these actors have to do that. I know they get paid a lot more than than like I do, but like what they actually go through just for like oh, yeah. three minutes worth of film is mental. Well, the the payment is compensation. That's the point. That's why they're paid so highly. You know, they're being compensated for uh, for 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 what they're having to do and for the you know. The, the the lives that they have chosen, but uh, well, it sounds like an awesome experience, though. It was. I tell you, I was already floored when he told me the Angelina Jolie story. So everything else was yeah, great. I, I can imagine. <laughs> I can imagine. Well, um, well, look, Paul. I would like to, um, and, and no rush. So let's. Uh, but I'd like to finish up with a few standard questions that I'm going to ask all our guests. Um, first one: How much do you hate Dan? Um, no, no. Um, Six out of ten. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So first up would be. I think I might know the answer to this. Favourite genre? Definitely horror. Yeah. Uh, next up, favourite director? Um, and, and I think it's only fair we should have a favourite, rather than one single favourite director, do we, uh, do we go favourite male, favourite female, or do we just go one director? There's only one for me that um, has uh, like changed the way I look at film. And it wasn't for the reason you think. So the guy is Stanley Kubrick, uh, and it's not for The Shining. It's actually for a film that he didn't do. Um, you know the film AI? Yes. So he was meant to do that. And I went to his exhibition uh, recently that was in London, and yeah. he had storyboarded. Right. And I didn't know how much I loved the film until I saw his storyboards. This is weird. I liked the film, but I never loved it. And when I saw the way his hand-drawn storyboards, his little notations, uh, just every single possible angle that he'd tried out from, from like logos, from uh, every single detail, every minute detail, this guy must have spent... Oh, I just can't imagine. Like, if I went into a song like that, We'd be fucking Metallica, you know. What I mean, this guy was extraordinary, and I, I, it was one of those times that I haven't had many times in my life where I got those chills on my neck just to know that this, that this person, such a an artist. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, there, there we go. It's Stanley Kubrick for, for, for just, for just everything he embodied. Like, oh, fucking that guy. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Um, and after everything I said earlier, um, favourite uh, favourite movie? If you have one. Uh, Forrest Gump. <laughs> very, no, good. very good, very good, no, very good, very good. No, I would have to say, like, and I'm going to do a TV show as well, OK? I, so, no, I was going to fucking ask you TV show, you cheeky cunt. All right, OK. Oh, that's, <laughs> that's even better. Right, film, film. It, it's got to be Hellraiser, my number one. OK. I, I, I've thought about this long and hard, uh, not just for today, but just... Well, Life in general, day, though. Every day. Lockdown, isn't it? <laughs> uh, I think it's it's perfect. I watched it last night just to make sure. And yes, yes, it was perfect. Uh, so, yeah, that that for me is number one. Can't, I can't, if anyone says anything nasty about it, you're, you're wrong. Um, yeah, that's that. Cool. Okay. Um, next up would be favourite actor male, favourite actor female. Oh, okay. Mm. Like, but again, it, it, well, clearly, clearly, there's a hole in your uh, in your notes here. Do, well, do you know what? You didn't see this one coming, did you? I didn't see it coming, but I think, and fuck it, I'm just gonna say, it, I think it's Brad Pitt. And I tell you, no, but, well, can I just say, can I just say that's that's a perfectly, perfectly respectable um, answer, in my humble opinion. I, I and I, I tell you, I'm going to tell you why, and then you think it's not a good answer. Uh, it's because you fancy uh, him. 
exactly what I'm doing. That's not to do it. Uh, it's, it's a film that he did called Legends of the Fall, which I think is just like a love story. Ah, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, he cries in it, and it really moved me. Uh, and it was the first time I felt myself totally being moved by a film. I don't know when that came out. Uh, but bloody hell, like, it destroyed me. So, yeah, Legends of the Fall, like, watching Brad Pitt do that, in- incredible. Right, and it, and it was a, it was a like girly film. Imagine, imagine. I know, God. I mean, really, you're just ruining your credibility on this on this show, aren't you? Love it, absolutely love it. Yeah, uh, yeah. Female, um, there there is millions and millions and millions uh, and millions. I'm just saying millions while I look it up. Uh, yeah, yeah. This this name. is this is great as you dig yourself as big a hole as possible by saying, well, yeah, here's this one male actor. Oh, and as when it comes to women, oh yeah, lo- yeah loads of them. They all look the same, oh, don't they? I'm hey? the name. All right, I'm not looking it up. I'm not looking it up. She was in Mother. Um, oh, Jennifer Lawrence. Yes, and it's because of Mother. Thank you for that. Fucking uh, hell, yeah. Jesus Christ, Paul. The weird thing is, right? First episode of this podcast was with Paul Knight. Um, this episode is going to be the second episode, and it's going to be with Paul Waller and Paul Chanter. So we've only had people called Paul on here so far, so I am going to change it up soon. <laughs> right. No, don't do that. Don't but, do that. But I wish I was interviewing Paul next, because um, he cannot fucking stand Jennifer Lawrence. <laughs> um, that... See, I, I really didn't think much of her. I watched Hunger Games and thought, mm, come off it. This is shit. Yeah. And then I uh, then I saw Mother, and everything yeah. changed. So these are two modern. Uh, m- uh, mother modern is uh, m- mother is full on. It's f- it's full fucking on. Um, uh, by the way, one uh, um, a movie recommendation for you and the listeners um, is a film called Possessor. Oh, it's on my list. Yeah. When did you see that? Last night. Mate, I can't wait to see that. Do you want a link? It's meant to be do, you want, do, you, do you want me to link you up, bruv? Oh, yeah, link me up for sure. Yeah? Cool. I will do. Possessor. Mate, I can't wait to see that. There's been a lot of chatter uh, about that recently. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, was a, I was a big fan back in the day of stuff like Videodrome and, you know, Cronenberg stuff, which is all fucking odd. Um, and, um, yeah, I, I, yeah, you know... Videodrome was my James Woods era. I'd watch anything with James Woods in it, um, and um, and Cronenberg as well. But um, it, it, yeah, it had that sort of. Oh, you know, you saw um, um, uh, Vivarium recently. I saw your brief review. Yes. Um, I mean, that is that is definitely that. You know, that's a horror. Basically, it's a social experiment that is that's you know horrendous, but. Um, I haven't seen anything quite as disturbing as the child in that for a long time. <laughs> in fact, the last time I saw something as disturbing as that child, it was probably it was probably someone's child. Um, but it was just fucking wrong, wasn't it? Like I've never wanted to hit a child with a stick so hard. Oh, and uh, ne- neither have I. Well, not today. Wow. Um, but. Um, yeah, I mean that that was just it was properly like, oh dear, you want to just rip its head off and kick it down the street. The, yeah, uh, I don't think we should spoil it because it's quite new and it's going to yeah. come to um, Yeah, true. Lot, so lot, yeah, so so Vivarium and Possessor are um are this interview slash episode's recommendations. Um Paul, as always, it's a pleasure to talk to you and and, and it doesn't matter what it's about, it's always a pleasure. Mate, I've loved it. Absolutely fucking loved it. Great, great. Awesome. Well, don't go anywhere because there's something I want to uh, talk to you about. But um, for now, Paul Waller, thank you so much for being my guest on Movie Bollocks. I did indeed go on to uh, watch The Mist in black and white. And I realised I had watched it in black and white before. Um, but um, it was awesome to watch it again. And funnily enough, um, uh, Paul was messaging me saying that he couldn't find a copy of it um, online in black and white. So he, uh, he'd been online and bought a copy of the Blu-ray. Um, so there you go. That is a top tip for um, your uh, your lockdown. If you haven't seen The Mist, check it out. Um, 
Uh, although you will have to be watching it in colour unless you've got the disc. And if you've got the disc, then you've probably already seen it. So there you go. Um, my, my my sort of lesser well-known movie to give a watch to this month would be The People vs. Larry Flint. An awesome true life um, documentary for which Courtney Love was nominated for an Oscar as Best Supporting Actress. Let me just say that again. Courtney Love was nominated as Best Supporting Actress. She was nominated for an Oscar. And do you know what? It's worth it. She's fantastic in it. Now, admittedly, she is playing um, a drug-addicted slut. Um, So that might explain why, A, she got the Oscar nomination, and B, has never been nominated for anything since. It's pretty much her ideal role. But there you go. Um, Definitely worth checking out. Starring Woody Harrelson and the aforementioned Courtney Love. It's a brilliant movie. Um, In fact, there's somebody else in it as well. Who else is in it? Hang on a sec. Just getting the... uh... Um, and Edward Norton Edward Norton as well um, is in it playing um, uh, and it's the story of Larry Flint who created Hustler the uh, the American porn mag basically he um, yeah he just about almost single handedly created the porn industry it's a fascinating documentary documentary it's a fascinating movie um, it's not a documentary it's done as a, it's, oh, fuck me it's a movie it's a live story watch it it's fucking amazing it's brilliant hope you've enjoyed it survive stay inside save lives and I'll see you next time on Movie Bollocks cheers